All right, what's up, you cocksuckers? It's Tuesday. We got a fun episode for you today, man. It's gonna be it's gonna be good. We got some cool guys on here, but before we get into that, I just want to give a quick thank you to our sponsors. First and foremost, we'd like to thank DDP, aka Donkey Dodgers Poker. Yo, yo, so, yo. thank you, sir. <laughs> I didn't know that was my yeah, cheers. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Fucking put hamping me up. Um, Donkey Dodgers Poker is a great way to either learn the game, dive into it if you, you know, always wanted to play some live poker. Uh, it's held in local pubs around the state, uh, Rhode Island. And, I mean, it's just a fun night out, you know, for a 20 or $25 buffet, you can go play in a free poker tournament with a cash prize with a lot of nice people. So it's a really nice social thing to do. And if you're serious about poker, you can go too because, um, you know, it is poker. So people play, people do want to win. So whether you're a beginner or seasoned pro looking for a fun night out, go check them out. You can find them on Facebook and shoot the owner, Paul Carew, a nice message. Let him know that the J2 podcast sent you. That's Donkey Dodgers Poker. Also, we want to thank Division Street Auto. Guys, Division Street Auto is our day one sponsor, our most loyal companion. Quit fucking around, all right? Your car needs some work. Go down to Division Street Auto in Pawtucket. That's at 595 Division Street. Talk to George whether you need spark plugs, new brakes, windshield wiper, continuum transfunctioner. They'll take care of you guys, all right? Flux capacitor. (laughs) The flux capacitor. You mentioned the J2 podcast, and you will get a 10% off uh, the labor on your bill. So that's good. Everybody likes saving money. And you get treated fairly. You walk in, you know, the whole family's working there. They're not a big corporation trying to scam you, all right? So like I said, quit fucking around. Go see George. Also, Top Showroom and Gallery. So Top Showroom really specializes in all kinds of lighting, whether it's uh, LED, fluorescent, indoor, outdoor, under cabinet. Um, you know, if you have a showcase, um, whatever the case is, you know, they got you covered. Um, LED, fluorescent, like I mentioned, uh, landscape lighting. And if you don't have time to go down there and check out what you need, give them a call at 401-861-0695. They'll even come out and assess your situation to help you get started, point you in the right direction. Onlyville Tire in Providence. We want to thank Dory for being a sponsor for quite a while now. They're at 86 Plainville Street, and they've been around for close to 100 years. They're a one-family operation. When you think about that, it's pretty incredible, and I think it says a lot about their customer service to be able to stay in business for almost 100 years under the same owner. That's, again, Onlyville Tire. Whether it's new, used, uh, rotation, if your car's just vibrating, go check Dory out. She'll take care of you. And almost last, certainly not least, JW & Son Construction. You can find them on Facebook or you can give them a call at 401-487-4134. Sweet handwriting, Jason. Um, They specialize in kitchens, bath, interior, uh, finished flooring, siding, decks, and roofs. They don't do pools, unfortunately. I'm sure they know a guy, though, so if you need a pool, still give them a call. You reach out to John. That's 401-487-4134. And finally, our newest member to the sponsorship team here at the J2 Podcast, we have Legends Pub and Grub in Cranston. That's at 1458 Park Avenue. And coincidentally is a regular host for DDP, so you might catch them there too. But anyways, great service, friendly people at Legends, you know, nice girls working behind the bar. You can see Ricky from episode, I think, 16 or 17. If you do go there, I recommend getting the egg rolls. they got special egg rolls all the time, whether it's Italian egg rolls, uh, Portuguese egg rolls, fucking corned beef and cabbage egg rolls. You know, it's not just the Chinese that are doing egg rolls. They're out there, all right? We got this. Go see Legends Pub and Grub in Cranston. Other than that, ladies and gents, thanks for getting through the ads. We did it. <sighs> Take a breath. We made our money. And our episode today, we have Chuck and Brad from the Chuck and Brad podcast. I don't know much about them. I you know, know they have a podcast based out of Rhode Island. They're comedians. I believe one of them is a musician. I've listened to their shit. It's pretty funny. I think they'll fit in great. Listen up. Enjoy. Kick that motherfucker, George. Time to talk some shit with the J Squared Podcast. Here we go. A local punk rock venue and getting yeah. more and more people out. Three, two, one, and then you can go. 
<clears throat> Three, two, one, boom. All right, you're back in the hot seat, sir. Yeah, well, mm. when you're trying to, if you're trying to get like a, like a good interview, it's it's almost the same to me as my band trying to get a big show or the podcast trying. Yeah, the podcast trying to get an interview. Yep. My band trying to get a show. Us as a comedy team trying to get a show. Me trying to work on a film thing. It all has to do with kind of building yourself up and just trying to kind of trick your way into the next right. level. So That's weird. when the Jeff Tremaine interview came up, um, we were able to reach out and say, hey, we've done this podcast for X amount of years. Maybe it was six at that time. Um, and we've interviewed the bands, less, you know, people from the bands Less Than Jake, Real Big Fish, Bowling for Soup, and we've had on... Oh, but I've heard of them. I haven't heard of the first two, but I've heard of Bowling for Soup. You heard of Less Soup. Than Jake? Really? No, no. Oh, man, yeah, this, they're a great band. Yeah, um, they're really good. But... Uh, you know, those two, and then you say, you know, let's say we interviewed, actually the guy that did all the storyboards for the town with Ben Affleck, mm -hmm. he lives like right around here. His right. name is Jason Mayo. And oh, it's like, shit. oh, we had this guy on. We had the Disney animator that yep. we know that Brad knew from his church. And uh, you kind of build up whatever you can for a resume. It's fun right. just networking, you know? it sounds like, whatever yeah. you can. Yeah, and it's also like they people start trusting you after you have a certain amount, you know, when you have a certain amount of accomplishments. And so, just like with the band, I mean, the band started out, you know, we were we would open a phone book and like look for a venue that had live music and just call them and say can we come mm. play and eventually you're like oh we drew this many people let's ask for this show and tell them we drew this many people and they say now we've opened for this band can we open for this band now and then you kind of climb the ladder that way yeah and initially you kind of have to like almost sell yourself oh, yeah. exactly you know but it's kind of and i'm glad that you guys i think you always will you haven't you, you can't really find much about us, you know, so I, I appreciate you yeah. guys taking the chance. <laughs> oh, no, we're no, in that no. beginning stage of like, hey, man, we're local. Like, this no, is what no, we do. No. I've heard yeah. yours. Check us out. Yeah, you reached out to me and you were just like an honest dude. And I'm like, this guy's an honest dude. I like him. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. And Brad's, like, Brad's like, what's the deal with this? And I'm like, I don't give a shit. We're going to make some new friends. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. almost exactly that's exact. verbatim. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that, that's, that fits kind of right in. It's so whose idea was it to start the whole podcast thing? Was it... Brad was uh, I, I, you know, I had wanted to do a podcast, mm. uh, like, but like scripted, like basically like an old timey radio show because I right. had no idea the amount of work that would go into it. Right, right, right. And you know, we we had talked about it. We we had done a sketch show, uh, it was like a live sketch show, like a live sketch show at, in, in Newport. And uh, Chuck had the band and was like, "Oh, hey, I I'm redoing the band's website. I want to have content." Yeah. Updated every week so people will come back to the website. And, yeah, right. Because otherwise, you know, like if, if I'm interested in the band Def Leppard, how often am I going to Def Leppard's website and finding out Def Leppard's tour? And, and you know, that's mm. a national, international band. And so this is a, a regional band. Right, right. And so Chuck said, you know, we could do a podcast and that would give people a reason to come back and check out the band's website and, and learn more about the band and learn more about the improv group. And this was 10 years ago. So yeah. there wasn't like, it wasn't like the proliferation of, oh. of Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, where it kind of Right. People use that stuff right. in order to stay in contact with stuff that they like. At the time, it just, I think people were still going to websites. And 10 years ago, yeah. I mean, Facebook yeah. was just kind of kicking off, yeah, right? Right. Yeah. So we were, and we were, the band was already doing comedy videos to kind of help us market and spread the word. But those videos had actually gotten so, like, professional. Yeah. That it's like, you know, we would take weeks to write them. They'd right. have A and B storylines. We'd have, you know, we'd need a crew. We need lights. We need, we'd, we'd shoot for a long time. So we'd be able to come out with a video at most a couple times a year. So nice. we, we already were doing like blogs, you right. know, where I was like writing like just for fun, I guess. I don't even know why I was doing it. Yeah, was, I'd be like, I, I know, I beat this video game and I played this, this, <laughs> and I, we went to this movie. You and your Super Scope 6 for SNES. Yeah, I got, I went, Oh shit, taking <laughs> it back, my, dude. I bought my Nintendo Wii and I went and I got all the Super so Scope 6 games for the original Super Nintendo. So these games came out between like... Super Nintendo is such a fucking great system. It's the best. These, these games probably came out between 1989 and 1996. It's dope was, they came out with that classic little one, man. Yeah, so like oh, everybody can experience it now. I love it. But I was, I was playing those games and I was like, you know, I was very young it's probably like five yeah hell yeah came man. out so i was very young so i didn't take it seriously but i loved that big super scope it was like a light gun that was like a bazooka and uh so i put them all on my on my wii and i was able to play through them as an Dope. adult and so i'd write my little blog of like i played through these games yeah. and i saw this movie and here's what i think about and this and you're like i i had the worst customer service ever from verizon yeah and i would just like, write <laughs> these stupid blogs for myself and like yeah. my buddies and brad was doing one too and so when we started talking about doing a podcast it made sense to yeah get people to know about the band, what we were doing. And right. I'm like, oh, you know, I went to school for film. We're both smart guys who care a lot about comedy. We kind of yeah. are students of film and comedy. So, so I'm like, we'll just kind of talk about like what we like. And if people want to listen and partake, cool. And that's a way to get to new people. Hell yeah. I mean, the beauty of podcasts, too, is that 
there, there's you're not really competing with anybody. There's so right. many people yeah. to go around, you know, where yeah. back in the day, it's kind of like a, as a comedian, you know, before the internet and YouTube and all that shit, like if you wanted to be the comedian, like if there was a, a TV show, you wanted to be on that show. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. you don't want anybody else to succeed because now it's taken away from you where right. today it's kind of like, if we can help another podcast grow, like newer yeah. ones than yeah. us, we oh, can yeah, do that. Or, community. Yeah, like yeah. other people help us out. So it, Rise, it's cool. Rising tide lifts all boats. That's what we yeah, think about. Sure. Yeah, I think, I think that's definitely true, especially like, you know, uh, you, you sh- I try to have that attitude with everything from comedy, music, band stuff, but especially with something like podcasts, like new mediums like that, where they're free and you can just easily, con- you know, as a listener, you can easily consume them and um, they're there all the time on demand. I think that it does feel like that, where it's more like, yeah, let's just do a couple extra podcasts and be on this one and be on this one, and it's just fun to kind of. It's probably a network. great way to, like you said, network too, and, and help yeah. your exposure. I mean, because mm-hmm. don't I don't want to come across selfish, but like you guys being here certainly has a chance to help us, you know. And when we go on another podcast, that certainly has a chance to help them, and it's yeah, it's a yeah. very mutual, yeah, right. that's, beneficial that's, that's thing for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and like you said earlier, you know, you Symbiotic. just meet new people, which is always good. Oh, yeah. right. Now, do you both do comedy or? Yes, yes, we do. We do. We, you know, we started doing uh, stand-up comedy a few years ago, and um, we also were doing live podcasts. Right. Yeah. But they weren't. Know. They weren't like um, traditional. That sounds like, scary podcasting. as fuck. Just yeah. saying. Like, I remember the day one. You know, when we first broke out the shit. Even though it's not, it's pre-recorded. Right. Yes. So, but I still, I was looking at him. And I'm like, bro, I'm still kind of nervous. Like knowing that people are gonna hear this. Yeah. yeah. It makes me a little nervous. You know, like, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. So well, just we, doing it live, we have to man, cut a I lot mean, of stuff out of what this guy says. That's true. Yeah. I'm filthy. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but let me ask you. Speaking of that, yeah. so are there things that you guys don't talk about? Is is it is it edited? Is it is it raw? Is it unfiltered? I'll, I'll or say it... we don't really talk about politics, but it's not a rule. No. And I don't cut anything out. Like I mm. remember when. Uh, you know, I was the whole time I was on the podcast. Uh, I started my relationship with my ex girlfriend. She was on it. it. You know, we talked about it. She was. It was. You know, it was very open. And then we bought a house together, and she broke up with me four months after we moved into the house together. Awesome. And like that night, we got together and yeah. we podcasted about the breakup. It was like me oh, and shit, four dude. of my friends. Oh, so and that must like, have been pretty emotional for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, also my house burned down and we podcasted Either that week. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are oh, outside you watching the house burn down. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, no, it's so, just a short, so like, we, we've yeah. been pretty open about everything on the podcast. Right. Um, we don't talk about politics because, a, I feel like I'm not super educated, right? And my opinions are like, never stops us. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, pod, my my opinions are not unique either. There's like a lot mm. of people talking about the same stuff the that same I would stuff. say. Yeah. So it's hard for me to feel interested in that when I do feel passionate about a new band, a new movie, yeah. uh, a funny idea, anything, stuff that we're doing. Um, so it, that stuff is technically not part of it, but we're pretty open. I mean, I think that yeah. you, we talked about this year, the idea of, you know, we kind of podcast now just about what comes in our in our lives. Like tonight we're going to podcast after this. Right. And we're going to talk about our comedy tour this weekend. We went to you know, New York, Connecticut, and Boston. We're going to talk about the Koki the Clown show we went to on yes. Friday, which is... Koki uh, the Clown? He's a lead singer of No Effects, the band, yeah. and he just did a solo show as Koki the Clown. It's a character. Yeah, Koki. Performance art yeah. kind of thing. We're going to talk about that, and then we'll talk about Avengers Endgame, because we saw it last night. Um, and that's typical for us. It's just kind of like what's kind of going on in our lives. What's happening, yeah. But right now, I'm like, oh, let's do a thing where at the end of every podcast, or to close every podcast, we have a new kind of like... It doesn't have to be philosophical... But a question for us to really have an open discussion about on the right. podcast. Um, so, like, for the following podcast? or uh, Usually we do. We're not doing it for yeah. tonight's episode gotcha. because it's going to be so full. There's going to be a bunch of people on, I think. Um, but in general, so it's not just, like, oh, the current things of the day. It's kind of, like, deeper stuff. Right. Like we talk about... I'm trying to think. Cause yeah, one of, couple... one, one of my favorite things yeah. that we've talked about, and oh, it's yeah. not a great subject, is is everyone just lonely all the time. And kind of discussing the idea of as an adult mm. and, and how you spend your time with friends and kind of uh, how hard it is to feel connected to others as an adult. And uh, I think that's something that you don't expect from a podcast that normally leans comedic. But damn, we're getting deep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And, and, you know, it's it's good to have those conversations. And, you know, you, you talk well, about, like, your stuff is switches recorded. Switches it up a little bit. Yeah, your stuff yeah. is recorded. It's out there. So, like, yeah. it's always out there. And... Even if I change my mind and, you know, five years from now, I'm like, you know what? Being lonely is great. I love being sad all the time. <laughs> I still have that moment in time marked well, in my loneliness life. Loneliness is not doesn't always equal sadness, uh, this, right? This, this, this one, yeah. <laughs> You're like, for, me, for me, it does. I, I, think, I think the word lonely kind of has a yeah. set. Maybe, like, solidarity doesn't yeah. equal loneliness. Yeah, yeah, solidarity. Yeah. I'll say one yeah. time uh, we did a podcast... 
and I just was very open about the struggles of filmmaking and live comedy and, and art and like what I was going through and kind of how I felt really defeated at the time and how yeah. do you deal with that how do you go forward and someone messaged me afterwards and was like hey man it's like, I, I want you to know like I listened to that episode and some of that I'm not close to I don't right. really know um, and uh they were like, I just want you to know, like, I really appreciate really that because because that's, oh, that's how I real, feel dude. a lot of the time, and uh, it's, I never really hear people admit that they feel that way right. or talk about it in depth. Yeah, we so all I, have like that protective shell oh, where yeah. we don't want to really yeah. be too vulnerable for exactly, people. exactly. And you you want to seem cool, everything. You know? I think about you know this combines a lot of different things, but the idea of we reached out to the Impractical Jokers with a pitch video that we did of, of a prank we did at a live podcast, right? Which is already bizarre. Uh, they they liked it. They said, "We, you know, we want you to submit to write to possibly write for us. You know, yeah. we're, we're hiring writers. Oh shit! <laughs> right. And so they sent us the packet, and we we you know filled it out, sent them in. Uh, Chuck's was much better than mine. And uh, <laughs> I don't agree with that. We we did not get hired. But then we talked about it on the podcast, like, hey, we had this opportunity. We didn't get hired. That's this, awesome. This is how we feel about it. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And, but uh, shit, you have their info now. I'd yeah. be fucking spamming them with new <laughs> material all the time. Like, what about this idea, guys? <laughs> well, like, shit. So, how about this one? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I work Please. for the podcast Tell Him Steve Dave, and that's Quinn from Impractical Jokers, right. and then Walton and Brian from the show Comic Book Men. That, so that's who I film for all the time. That's my filmmaking job. I go to New Jersey and I film really? at Kevin Smith's comic book store with them, and oh, then I come shit. home and I edit. Nice. So, so I, we had already known Quinn yeah. from that. Like I already knew him from filming and stuff, but we kind of... Yeah, you it's know, so weird here. It's, it's awkward. I'm, I'm used to hearing him called Q, right? Yeah, Q, show. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's it's I, like I never want to approach him when we're filming or anything about like hey man I'd really love to work from practical jokers whatever so we actually went kind of around that and didn't use that connection at all we right. went cold and went straight it's to the writers who yeah. I didn't know I'm sure he probably respects that too like he, yeah. not that he would have you know like right. looked down on you for using the connection yeah. but just knowing that you did is kind of you know he must feel like all right well he didn't just suck yeah. up to me for that you yeah know? to be so honest cool. to be honest he has so much on his plate that i bet he doesn't even know that that happened yeah that to be completely honest yeah, yeah. you know but, but yeah they're fucking big now well yeah. the, way that, the way that it works is when you submit to write is that they keep them anonymous so that no one has any idea whose packets they're you know saying yes to i mean they only hired one person that year right so I don't know what happened, but can you share what your um your idea was? I'll, t I'll give you one of my ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah hell yeah, dude. All right, so you're you know, about to give us ideas that we're gonna do and use it to get views. <laughs> yes. How much you charge? So you know, you you guys know in Practical Jokers. Yeah. Oh and, God, you know, hell yeah. And the show, uh, for any listeners, I hate them know. actually because I'm I'm so upset that I didn't think of the idea for that <laughs> show first. Yeah. Fucking genius. I like, know. So genius. I know. So so the idea of the show, if you know listeners don't know, is that these four friends kind of put each other up to these challenges that will embarrass themselves, you right. know? And at the end of the show, like, if you kind of fail to do the stuff that you're asked of the other guys, uh, you're the loser, and you have to go through with this punishment. And the punishments can be really, really different, uh, but they're all kind of embarrassing. And so my idea, one of the punishments that I pitched for mine, was that Q had a ventriloquist dummy, and he was going to go in front of a crowd that was there to see a ventriloquist and that the guys would be backstage doing the voice, voice of the dummy right. <laughs> and he would have to just live with whatever they were saying. Right. And he would have to interact with on stage. Sounds yeah. pretty terrible, Sounds right? pretty terrible. That sounds legit. Here's and it twist. sounds like something that they would do, like that right. I would see well, on the show. Did something similar with a, a megaphone. Or so, well, here's, a, a, here's, a, here's a twist. So when he gets to the venue and he goes out, it's not actually a crowd that's there for a ventriloquist show. It's like a hip hop audience, and the oh, dummy shit. is there as like built as like a rapper, and so he has to do it, and they're yeah. doing the raps that are pre-recorded, and he has to be into nice. it and pretend. Dude, I, how great, did right? they say no to that? Because I've seen shit that wasn't as funny as that would have been Isn't on that the a good show. Idea? Yeah, that's yeah, so a solid idea. We had to write basically. I, the way I would. Dude, we can go to like loopos and do that. <laughs> you should do it. It's like two full episodes of the show. You had to write basically because yeah. it was a lot of ideas. It was products and. Stuff for them to do as you know, therapists and stuff like that. Like the fake, uh, what are they oh, the petitions. petitions. You had to come up with. Oh, I fucking love those are funny. Yeah. Those are, my those are funny, ones. dude. One of mine was uh, the petition was legalize legal lies, so, so that to make a petition yeah, yeah, yeah. be able to lie in court. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dude, they're fucking wild. That That's good? great. Isn't that that is great. Yeah. So I'm I'm so intrigued by that. Are you? Like when they when they said, "Hey, unfortunately, we're not going to go with this idea." Did they leave that door open? Like, can you still submit ideas or the way it works? Because like, it would. Su I can't imagine that it's just like, "Hey, we're giving up on that. We're not trying anymore." Right. So, you know? so the person we reached out to was Casey Jost. 
and he's on the show. He's one of the writers. He's uh, he hosts like Impractical Insider at the end. Mm -hmm. He has you know the silvery gr grayish hair. Mm -hmm. He's a young guy with like silver hair, and um, we reached out to him. He thought the idea the uh, the prank that we did was really funny at our live show, which is why he allowed us to submit. So we submitted our packets, and um, he and another writer, James McCarthy. Uh, James McCarthy told us that we weren't uh, hired. But we stayed in touch with Casey Jost, and we went to New York to moderate uh, at Big Apple Con. We moderated for John 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 Sheck, who is in uh, Legends of Tomorrow. He was in That Thing You Do. Yeah. Oh, I fucking love that movie, yeah. man. He was, he was That's Jonah got one Hex. of the best soundtracks yeah, he was, ever. He was Jonah Hex, Jonah in, Legends Hex in Legends yeah. of Tomorrow. And we also moderated, we were supposed to moderate for Jennifer Sihe, who is the voice of Sailor Moon. The singing voice of Sailor Moon. <laughs> right. But she didn't need a moderator, so we just sat she, on stage while she sang. Yeah, Full she disclaimer, just, she, she not, like, big, not familiar yeah. with Sailor Moon. Me, me Sorry, me I know it's like an anime cartoon, right? How, yeah, how are you familiar right. with Hot Pockets? Oh, because no, what are those? She did dude, the Hot Pockets. Dude, do I look like I'm familiar with fucking Hot Pockets? <laughs> <laughs> Actually. That was definitely a, that was a fat joke. Yeah. He was, she was he's the, like, wait, what can he relate to? Yeah, he has one under his arm. Right right <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's how we knew her as the singing voice of Sailor Moon and the original singer of the Hot Pockets jingle. Yeah, hot she's Hot Pockets. She, she oh, shit, well. dude. Yeah. It was funny. She recorded for us because every week we go into our main topics of our, pod, our podcast and we... And, we have her as a clip for our show going pod topics to go in. Oh, I like it. We get funny. Oh, wow, dude. Isn't that's that fucking funny? legit. Is that cool? So anyway, we went up to do that moderating job and uh, we met, we, we talked to Casey Jost and we're like, oh, come to our hotel and we'll do a big podcast about your yeah. life. And we did. And he came to our hotel and we like became friends with him that day. Oh, he's great. And so, you know, we've, you know, we've been talking to him for like a year and a half, two years now. And what happened was uh, the next year I was like, oh, I, you know, we really want to submit again. And I don't know what happened. I mean, he he was basically like he told me straight out. He said, "Your name is the next name on the list to, to me specifically right. that we're going to reach out to because of his better idea mm. for for submissions." No, it's more it's more because I was reaching out to him. Yeah. And then mm. uh, he was like, "I think we're not." He's like, "I think we're not hiring anyone this year." And then someone did get hired, but I don't know what happened. So we're still we're still friends with him. Um, so you're still very much in the mix, yeah. like, and, yeah, and willing I mean, to do that. You know, we, you're not forgotten by them. Yeah. Well, we he he was on our show on Saturday, this like two days ago. Yeah, oh, he was on our show in New York on Saturday. Well, you so. should have had him on the live episode and let motherfuckers call him out. <laughs> hey, what's the deal, bro? <laughs> He's a great dude. He's been really helpful. I, I you know I really still hope that that works out. And because I do so much work in Jersey for film work for Tell Him Steve Dave, like I'd love to be able to move to that area, New York, New Jersey, and live between. Where do you guys live now? We live in Rhode Island. I live in Warren. Yeah. Brad lives in Warren too. Nice. Um. And so I'd love to be able to kind of live between Rhode Island and Jersey and do my stuff here because I write more I write south. For, yeah, I write for Providence Monthly. I write for Motif Magazine. I'm in the band here. We do. You know, our home club is the Comedy Connection for Comedy. We do the podcast. Oh, in East Providence. Yeah. yeah. Nice. But then we do. Uh, you know, then I do all this stuff with Tell Him Steve Dave, and I'd love to go to New York and write and do film work for like television shows and stuff like that. That's awesome. I'd love to do it. You know, I'm, Dude, I'm really. We definitely don't have enough fucking talent to have this. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna learn how to juggle. Or we something. don't do anything, dude. We just fucking we just drink and like impractical jugglers. So <laughs> oh, I love this show. You gotta juggle. <laughs> That's cool. So you, you guys have definitely met some some cool ass people. That's oh, awesome, yeah. man. You know what? You know, like all jokes aside, man, that kind of it's it's a bit inspiring to it me to inspiring. think like, hey, man, you know, like we can meet cool people and yeah, just hell yeah. Like I um so I don't. I don't know many local podcasters. You know, it's just I listen yep. to some. I listen to Joe, like Joe Rogan a lot. Mm -hmm. Joey Diaz, fucking, mm -hmm. he's hilarious, man. Mm -hmm. um, I, so, and I just thought like this sounds like a cool thing to do. So we, we yeah. ended up just saying, yeah. "Fuck it, let's do it." Let's do it. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but, great. We started. A, I actually started a Facebook group called New England Podcast Community. You should uh, just look it up and oh, sign I'll be up joining for it. that shit because like I'm trying to get the people that podcast around here to kind of network more and, and do each other's shows and help each other out. Because That's incredible, I think it'd be better to make it like a we're, scene. We're in a group right now, but it's like fucking 40 million. It's like we're just like oh, dropping the bucket. It yeah. means nothing. Oh, I know. It, all it is is people trolling. Somebody asks for advice. They're like, hey, what should I use? They're like, go fuck yourself. What? <laughs> I know, on, on like on Facebook groups. So where can like, I yeah, order that? On yeah, eBay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I there's, there's a bunch around uh, in my... George, are you? I'm sorry, are you... Type in that one just so we can have it saved. What is it called? It's called New England Podcast Community. Can you just like note or something? But there, there's, a, there's a bunch around. <laughs> yeah, sure, shut up. Shut the fuck up, George. Can you close the porno, please? <laughs> <laughs> like, the thing's called Rhode Island Podcast. <laughs> no, New England Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> already already up. Up. Already I'm like, George, you good? He's like, yeah, we started. We're fine. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch around that we, you know, we've kind of reached out to all of them right away to be friends with them and kind of go on their shows. Truthfully, 
we do live events like pretty often like probably like at, least, at the Comedy Connection, I'd say about five times a year. Yeah. We'll do like our own headlining show or like something. We do. When's the next one? Oh, uh, actually, that's why we're here. Yeah. It's to, <laughs> to promote it. Promote oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> great. Hey. We announced it like two hours hey. ago online. Yes. And it's, oh, uh, word. Our 400th episode is going to be live at the Comedy Connection on Thursday, May Let me, 16th. I, gotta, I need to catch myself up. I'm confused. Because I was looking, I was, yep. you know. Oh, good. All right. Good. All right you know you're at like 411 on iTunes, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's fucking with the numbers here? I'll explain it. All right. So. Actually, you explain it. All right. Um, so because we started uh, our podcast in January of 2009, our 100 marks tend to fall in the winter. Now, yeah, as you know, that uh, Rhode Island winters can be uh, unpredictable. Mm. And so sometimes, sure. you know, it, it snows a lot and events are canceled. Sometimes it snows some and people just don't want to go out. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's just cold rain and... So we decided uh, for our 300th episode a couple years back, we're like, look, I know 300 would fall on like January 11th, but it's going to get snowed out. Let's move it to like later in the spring. So what we do is we do episode like, you know, weekly. We do like episode yeah. 299 and the following week we do 301. And, and, we and then we do like yeah. episode 300 around that yeah. time. Around like, so you just make up your own numbers. Yeah. That's like a celebration. We should just celebrate our thousandth episode <laughs> right now. <Yeah. laughs> well, we're, we're, you know, we've passed the mark. Yeah. But we're just kind of loosely celebrating around That's the that thing. thing about it. It's, it's yours. Who the fuck, who's yeah. going to say anything to you? Yeah, right. So, so yeah, that's the thing. By I the think... way, it did it did snow on the night that we would have recorded <laughs> our 300th episode. Yeah. Yes. 400? Yes. No, <laughs> well, that's the thing. So... Essentially, because I've been in the band for 15 years, we've done a lot. We've planned a lot of shows where we put a lot of work in, promotion, you know, practice for the band yeah. and stuff, where the show just got... What kind of music is it? It's like yeah. punk rock, but yeah. it's like mainstream punk rock, like Green Day or Blink-182. Nice. You are yeah. our second punk rock superstar oh, who's the other one? that's been on the show, Troy Edwards wow. of... Do you know who Failing that is? Sky. Sure. Failing's I know favorite. Failing's guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. The fucking lead singer on it, man. How have you uh, not heard of us? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's great. We played, with them. we played with them a bunch of times. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Yeah, Look at that. He did a Guitar Hero set. Didn't they do a set as the characters from I Guitar Hero? I have no Hero? idea, probably. Jesus yeah. Christ. I think so. What? I think so. <laughs> that sounds about that's right. right. So we, he was telling us, you know, he's world, you know, not world, but like he was touring all over the country, you know, LA and shit like that. And we asked him, we're like, bro, like, that's awesome, dude. Like, you're like a rock star almost. You know, you're going city to city, yeah. touring. What's the craziest thing that you've ever experienced, you know, with life on the road? Big titties. He goes, that's what I wanted to know. Like, <laughs> fuck it, like, like, bro, I was like, I was like, like who did cocaine off your dick? Like, I went that's... to L.A. and I saw some big titties. <laughs> <laughs> no, he goes, oh, you so we... Right here, man, right around the corner. <laughs> he goes, we did this one... Uh, we did this one show in Iowa, and as soon as we got off the bus, man, all we could smell is shit. I'm like... We're like, that's the most that's exciting it? thing you yeah. have. Rock star. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Iowa smells like shit. That's what I yes. learned as a musician. That's legit. Um, so, so you're, the, sh the live one you have coming up, it's at the Comedy, Comedy Connection. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's so what's it, what's it entail? It's... Well, it's it's more of a it's it's not just us sitting at a table and no, talking. No, when we do a live podcast, it's people not, come. You're like back the fuck up. We're yes. working. It's it's not like uh, it's not like the weekly podcast, which is more like this, which is you know us talking like in an improvisational way about whatever we want to talk about. Right. We figured when we started doing a live podcast that if people are paying to see us. That we should, you know, bring something visual to mm. the stage yep. and maybe something a little bit more planned out. You know, like itinerary, like. Kind of, well, we yeah. have like we have like segments. We actually produce full segments, so it's really closer to a variety show, right. like a live comedy variety show, than it is um, like a podcast. You just get the luxury of releasing it on the podcast mediums, so yeah. well, we people actually, can go and, back and, and listen you know, to and it. And honestly, and branding it. Mm. I, it, that's right. more than anything of, True. rather than like Chuck and Brad put on a variety show mm -hmm. for no reason it's you know yeah. the live podcast <laughs> for no sounds for no reason. well the live yeah, we, podcast we sounds that. really no good came out. they were like that's weird no I love that well, idea it's, it's more like you know if, if our show if the podcast Chuck and Brad podcast is based around our back and forth and we're going to do a live show it's kind of going to be an extension of that no matter what even right. if it is Absolutely. something more difficult you got to stay true more. to the you know yeah is and, it interactive uh, with like the crowd there, or we've we've done interactive stuff with the crowd uh, at at our live podcast and at uh, our, comedy our regular comedy shows, uh, and sometimes it's worked and sometimes it hasn't. And honestly, tricky, huh? not not sure what throwing curveballs out there, fucking it's, it's hecklers. Just, well, just yeah. so, with you. so like one time we did a thing. You guys like this? Where uh, for Halloween <laughs> we played a game called that Brad came up with called Trap or Treat. Where we had three people come up, and we had like jack o' lanterns that not jack o' lanterns like, like, like plastic, plastic ones that you would yeah. trick or treat right. with, and you reach in and you get like a candy, but one of them had a mouse trap in it. Yeah, a lot oh, of mouse trap. Fucking god! Mouse trap, right? 
And it's quite a. You guys are animals, dude. What's wrong with you? <laughs> so, so Russian roulette. You so monsters. If you did it's that, like if you one of them has ricin snapped, in it. Then you get to move on to the lightning round. The lightning round was an actual car <laughs> jack lantern, and we hooked up a car battery to it. <laughs> and, like, electrified it with, like... You're, like, really trying to hurt people. <laughs> and then we cut it with really thin, like, the intro thing, and there was a candy in it, and you had to get it. And so people would, you know, come up and try to do that. And then at a Christmas show, you know... They, and by the way, it worked... Did get it, hurt? It worked really well. Uh, you know, the, the girl who ended up... I'm surprised up the club let you do that. We, yeah, we, 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 yeah, we <laughs> oh, my God. We like, did make the people sign waivers as they came up, though. Yeah, no yeah. shit, dude. And, uh, and, you know, like, the, the mousetrap, like... Barely went and hit her on the hand, and then a car battery, like a, a jack o' lantern, doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't work. Should, it right. was just for the show. So we, we hooked it, it up. Perfectly. The, we, we really did it. We really yeah. connected it with the. Uh, what are they called? Jumper cable. The jumper right. cable to so the battery yeah. and connected. But it's not conducive. But it's not going to conduce any. So it just was for the live <laughs> audience. They were excited. But then. Uh, so they're all like, oh, yeah, knowing yeah. nothing's going to, nothing's yeah, going to yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah. You're just but, like. But we were watching, and she literally, like, she legitimately did not touch. Yeah. The, the, the outer. Phone. That's yeah. funny. So you know, guys, like playing Operation. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's exactly. You know, what uh, Bonehead's like. Wing Bar. Yeah. All right. So we're friends with those guys, and those guys will sponsor our events sometimes, and we'll have them make us like special stuff. And so for our, one of our Christmas shows, they made us ghost pepper peanut butter balls ghost pepper that's yeah. so there was peanut, peanut butter ball. balls with ghost pepper in them and basically Sounds we called terrible. three people on stage and we said here's three peanut butter balls you know whoever well, has ghost pepper and whoever gets the ghost pepper oh, can you just wins not, this thing right? you feel yeah. the fucking spice sticking yeah. to every part of your mouth dude like with right. peanut butter and so I said whoever you know whoever gets it and so they all I was like alright one two three and they all put them in their mouth and I'm like now I said whoever gets it I didn't say that only one of them <laughs> oh <laughs> you <laughs> You're an animal. And so everyone got the ghost pepper. Yeah, they were all they were all like good about it. They were fine. Yeah. Um, hey, you sign up for that. You got to be yeah, ready for it. One woman flipped out, but uh, we, she didn't. What do you mean? When, when she, just, out. she just went in the back. I heard her screaming a lot. Yeah, she didn't. Uh, she was. Uh, uh, she was intox- in pain. She was intoxicated somewhat, yeah. and like well, didn't know what ghost pepper was. And we were like, we were like, are you sure you want to do this on stage? And she wouldn't pay attention. She wouldn't. Like, pay attention. Listen, you don't lady, know what it is. Have you ever hot Satan? as fuck. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. So this she had like, blown Satan. <laughs> she's like, oh, uh, she's like, oh, this, this reminds me of something. <laughs> this will be fine. AKA Satan, me. is that you? <laughs> AKA me. She's uh, got that spicy yeah, she, and, jizz. You know, it's, it's weird because I, I felt sympathy, and then she was so, you know, dickish. Yes, that. Uh, How that can you I'm be a like, dick when I'm you're like, that you know dumb what? to go do that? Just eat the peanut butter ball, man. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so that was the crowd stuff. That like, it's funny because for us as comedians. I actually think that those moments have less comedy in them than the rest of our show. It's more like shock. But right. people, but people are really entertained and they really like yeah. it. Makes it more exciting. Maybe, maybe oh, less yeah. comedy, yeah. but right. equal like entertainment value. Right. Exactly, you know, it's people, something different. Yeah, so that's so, cool, but, man. That's but we've awesome. also done some stuff like that that really broke up the crowd and they stopped paying attention. Yeah. And so it was like, we, we passed out something for people mm. to fill out. Any We're really re- bad shows? Like, just like, oh man, we fucked this up. Like, um, just... you know, we, well, <laughs> like, yeah, we uh, tried to drown someone like, once. Yeah, we <laughs> should, uh, you know, on the Jay Squared and... podcast. <laughs> 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 we never, we never, uh, I don't think we ever did a bit that just was like terrible. Um, but we've had like, you know, bad, like bad situations for the live show. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, the only time I can really think of well, like fights or some shit like that. Or no, just, just, no. just material like, you know that doesn't work, or no, no. That's the thing is, it's not that material. Like, we, so we did our Avengers show. We have a, so one of the things we do consistently is we'll do a live show where the headlining bit is that Brad will take a famous movie like Back to the Future, Jurassic Park, Avengers, How to, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and he'll redraw every scene in the movie. And he's like just when you the, say re- like actual draw, yeah. actually Here's draw. The thing, though. Terrible at art. It's awful. What? Oh, I'm really <laughs> bad at drawing. It's, it's so this, for like this, for this one, do you just have a? Uh, I, I no. Stick you know, like, would figures. be better. Like a <laughs> fat Thor on this. One. I have fat Thor. <laughs> yeah. Fat yeah. Thor was on by accident. Yeah. yeah. So he does that. Then what I do is I take those and I rewrite a narration based on what they look like. Yeah. And I write it in Brad's <laughs> voice, and Brad has to read it in front of the audience. And it's including stuff about him that's making fun of him and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And it's a great bit. And we've done it four times at the Comedy Connection. It yep. always has been awesome. And that's what we took on the road this weekend to do like shows in Connecticut and New York and Massachusetts. And uh, the Connecticut show went awesome. Um, 
but like New York and Massachusetts were like really really tough because we don't have a draw there, so we had a right. very very small amount of people coming out. The Boston show they switched venues on us a week beforehand, and they took mm-hmm. our event off the website without re, re uh, like telling people where it was. We had fifty oh, wow, podcasts, that's fucked, dude. fifty other podcasts running ads wow. for the show, given the information of the other venue, Damn. and it's just it's just not on the website. If people showed up that day, it wasn't there. Yeah, um, a lot of stuff. And so those shows were just so. rough, like yeah. where it's like there was like you know seven people in the audience for the yeah. Boston show. The and worst so, is that that like seven? fucks with your energy oh, at that point, oh, you know? Because you're saying, well, I'm sure so, it fucks with your confidence. And yeah, like confidence. now you're. So, and so and it's also like people are. It sucks because even if what it's like you're having doing sex is funny, when only seven people show up. Yeah, what are you gonna do? <laughs> what, what, like what's the point of even taking it out? <laughs> so like when you know when people are in a room <laughs> where it's like sparse like that, I think they're even more. Uh, you know, hesitant to laugh or accept anything because it's almost awkward. Yeah, because so it it's was, like spotlights on them. So know, it's more laugh. about the fact that yeah. like the show situation sucks than like the show because we've done that exact show before, and you know multiple times, and it's I, I'm really really behind the the show, but uh, yeah, so that kind of stuff sucks. But you, but you got to get through. I mean, if you're gonna be a comedian, right. you kind of got You got to go yeah. through bad shows. Yeah. You know, oh, which, yeah which is hard, I, but it sucks because with the band. If no one's in the audience, I'm like, who gives a shit? And it's me and four of my friends just playing on stage, being super loud and singing together. Now you're just practicing, kind of. Yeah, exactly. As a comedian, you you, a comedian. you can't really pr- you need people laughing to know whether or not it sounds good. Yep. Oh yeah. The and, band. And if you're like, in a band, you can you can hear it, you right. know, but you don't know if your shit is funny unless people are laughing at it. And then with a band, you're you're interacting with other artists on stage, and that's how you can mm. continue to move forward. And when you're a comedian, you're kind of having an interaction with an audience, and so if the audience is just cold and not interested and terrible it's like holy shit what is that feeling like what, what, like so when it you're so bad let's say when you're on stage or probably like an awkward date uh, uh, if i had to compare it to anything yeah. you're just trying to entertain some shit that's not really there's I, no spark that was, almost that was know? another episode of the podcast was brad's awkward date yeah it was uh this <laughs> this january i went on a not great date uh i think the new york show i was like sweating and like fearful and really anxious why were you nervous were you just uh, i i think because or were you sick b- were because you... no just because we well, it's weren't the first getting time ever at madison square garden yes. you're gonna be nervous yeah there was a bad bunny show at madison square garden <laughs> that night yeah, I, was like, uh, I probably would have gotten more laughs there anyway uh <laughs> yeah and then for our actual avengers bit i was fine because you know it's mostly scripted and, and yeah yeah again, yeah super confident in the material and then boston i was like angry that, yeah. that there weren't enough people there. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Did it show on stage? Uh, it like... probably did. <laughs> Fuck you guys that aren't here. <laughs> no, it was, it was, it was, you know, it was just a matter of like, I probably went through it 10% faster than I yeah. have in the past. Right. And, uh, you know, that, like, that's well, a pretty like, normal thing when you're nervous. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like yeah. when you're even our first few episodes, I had to tell myself like, Hey man, slow down. You yeah. know, like I'm just yeah. kind of just trying to get it over with. You're almost like, all right, spotlight's on you now. You know, you know I think that's, I mean, that's a good thing. It's like part of the process yeah. to becoming very good and very used to, I think so. I you think know, well-rounded not, and you're not going to find a successful comedian who's like, yeah, I haven't had bad shows. You know right. what I mean? Like, yeah, this, yeah, like, like or even a, I, in a band, right? Even yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. Band's same thing. And yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I think we, we, you know, we've done stand-up shows that were sparsely attended or, uh, you know, the the bar we were doing it at had half the bar set aside for a comedy show and half for a going away party for like oh, a that's local. That's gotta be annoying. Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> and, and stupid. I, <laughs> just like half of it's a bachelor party. Oh, yeah. I was crazy. I was terrible, but Chuck f- was able to play with the reception. crowd and yeah. you know make fun of people a little bit. Uh, but definitely more than more than me, and uh, and I felt it in that moment where I'm like, I hate this. Well, that's one of the <laughs> but this, but you realize that like, you know. It's uh, for stand up. It's five to seven minutes or whatever on stage, and then it's it's done. Yeah. What I what I one of the things I've been trying to do the past couple of years is I try to take any opportunity I can to be in front of an audience in a situation that I know will be bad. Right. Because or not not that's like what? bad. What's but an example? Like unusual. What? Yeah. Example. Um, we one of the things we do that's difficult is we'll host. Have you guys heard of RI Food Fights? You know what that is? Our uh, it sounds right up my alley, though. It's an, oh, or- it's an organization in Providence. Uh, I'm, I'm part of it. But the owner is Jim Nellis, and basically they'll be like, there's two kinds of types of events they do. One, like for May, they'll be like, you pay us $25, and you get 25 like individual coupons for 25 burger places. And all May, you can go and just trade one in for a free burger. So a dollar or a burger. Ultimately. Yeah, right around there. And they do that. We do that all year long. George, <laughs> you look that up, bro? 
Uh, I mean, are in, any of us going to say no to that? <laughs> in, uh, oh, it's great. In, in January. He's like, yeah, it's like oh, what? Wings. New England food fights? Or something? Yeah, yeah, it's wings thing. Big so wings. it's, it's, oh, it's like wings. six wings at, at you like know, 30, 20, 30 yeah. places. It's more uh, than you know, for that one. Iced coffee, iced one coffee. month, pizza, one month. Speaking taco, of one wings, month. let me interject really fast. Yes. Wings on five. They're closing down. Just really? I don't know. Well, that's right near my spot, dude. Near my house. Johnson. I've, you know what's crazy? I've lived in John. Used I've, to be Wings to Go or something. No, no, I, I don't something? think Wings to Go is. I think something different. But oh. Wings on Fire. I lived in Johnson almost six years now, and I just ordered for the first time like last year, dude. Maybe not. Maybe it was this year. But it's fucking incredible, man. No. I ordered the wings. They showed up in you know those uh, aluminum foil like yeah. uh, huge like pans that go. In, it showed up in that dude. It was incredible. I mean, yeah. I ordered like a hundred, but still, <laughs> it was fucking. Sorry, delicious. what were you saying? Right oh yeah, so, 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 <laughs> so, yeah, so my bad. Fights does does <laughs> these <laughs> month long. <laughs> Uh, month long events that like let people and then you know you vote on the website of which was your favorite burger or which was your favorite wing or, or whatever and so the what is that RI monthly RI food, food fights RI food fights yeah. and so the, you know one of the things they do that's, that's one thing the other thing they do is they'll do live events or like where basically it'll be like Sunday May 23rd something like that they'll Are you get like taking notes dude? let's say yeah. let's say 12 of like the best like bakeries and you'll go there and you'll pay like fifteen dollars at the door and you go in and you'll get twelve cupcakes and you vote on the best cupcakes there. Nice. Mm-hmm. That'll be the cupcake throwdown. That's all. Awesome. So they'll so have everybody kind of wins. Yeah. Like the yeah. consumer, the business, because they're right, right, kind right. of competing against each other for the best. Right. And so they'll have Brad and I, and they'll be like, yeah, for two hours, just you have two mics and you're basically hosting, hosting it for the yep. entire dude, thing. That's you have to dope. Talk dude. to everybody. Talk to people, talk to the actual people that are making the cupcakes, talk to the bakers, and just be funny and lively. And just keep that going for two hours straight. And so we do that. Yeah. We, we go and we do that with our two mics, and we just kind of walk around. It was a lot of fun. And it's, but now it's you do it at, fun, at one, also, is this, do all of these... Um, that, that one is at one location. Yeah, that's what that was yeah. my question. Yeah. yeah. The, so it's at one location, and all the different vendors are... Um, at yeah, one just, place. Just companies. Set up with that's tables cool. And where, where, like, where would they have that? That one they do at, they did the last one, they've done it at FET before. Okay. The, the venue, yep. and they did the last one at like the Civic Center on the first floor. Whoa, and that's then big. they also do at, they do we do an ice cream one with all ice cream trucks at uh, a place in Wayland Square in Providence. Nice. Um, but we'll do that. Or like one time, you know, Motif because like, I write for Motif. They asked <coughs> me if I would host the food truck awards, which is like you know you give out like twenty five awards for food trucks mm. and stuff. And there's just no script or anything. They're just <laughs> so like, just, here are the awards, and it's you and this girl, and we go up. Our that's Jenny. cool, though. So you can so be like, yourself. All right, yeah. we gotta make is Jenny, is that the Hot Pocket girl? No. No, no, no. No, no that's that's Jennifer Sihi. Um, but uh, so we go up, and we just kind of, I'm just, I just joke around and like just come up with stuff to be lively and be interactive. Yeah. And I kind of, I just work the crowd. Yeah, yeah, I jump at opportunities like that because it's going to make you better at doing this stuff. And yeah, also, hell yeah, dude. We also hosted uh, the midnight release of one of the Batman games. Arkham Knight. What? We, we went to the <laughs> Game Attleboro Stop. Game Stop. Yeah. And, uh, and oh, you know, so we had all this stuff prepared where we were going to do trivia contest, and you know, we knew the the store manager, and we had yeah. written. We said this this erotic fan fiction was written by her. <laughs> but clearly, we wrote yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. So we were going to present that. that. Some, hey, somebody <laughs> left us a review on iTunes. Uh-oh. That's a, what was it? It was just like it was uh, a erotic or so yeah. It was just like listen, man. If you're looking for a good like German erotica podcast, <laughs> this is the one for you. We're like what the fuck? That fine line. <laughs> We're like suck, what is this? Always shit? Them. But yeah. you know, so we we got to GameStop and uh, you know we were told, oh, you guys are gonna be in that corner right by the front door, and we're like, all right, awesome. And so we were getting set up, and then a guy comes in with a giant speaker. He's like, yeah, I'm the DJ. Where am I supposed to set up? And they're like right outside the door, and so nobody could hear anything. Oh my we god. Said. Oh. Because yeah, it was a DJ? Like, yeah. For a Batman video? Arkham, yeah. I remember that. It was pretty big. Yeah. But. I think it was a good game. But and it was like, you know, a pretty you uncomfortable like, hey, experience. Did you turn that down? Oh, uh, no. It was, <laughs> it was like, really once hard. we realized what was going on, we're like, all right, let's just get through it. Like, you guys should have just made time. it a karaoke night at that yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. So we, but, but I jump at stuff like that. That's right. going to be really challenging and kind yeah. of weird and where you're on your feet because, on your toes, because. You have to adapt and overcome. Kind yeah, of yeah, like actually, improv. We're going to something at a PVD Fest. Uh, malted barley is gonna break. They're the your world sponsor, record. right? Yeah. No, no, they're yeah, gonna they, break they, the world record. They're not your sponsor. They are. They are our sponsor. They are our sponsor. Oh, yes. I was gonna say, call <laughs> them the right now, thing, dude. Yeah. If that relationship's over, we're in. <laughs> no, 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 they are our sponsor. <laughs> but this is different. This is uh, they're gonna break the world record for like pretzel eating in one place in Providence on June eighth, <laughs> and they're like, do you guys want to be? Like part of it as like part yeah. of the host, and yet you guys are going to be on stage by yourself for like That's forty-five dope, minutes in front of thousands of people, and then you're going to go into the press That's thing. what we need to do. And I'm like, sure, oh, man, man, let's do it. And yeah. so we're doing that. That's awesome. And it's going to be—it's a lot of pressure. And Chuck, it's, Chuck believes he's—he is going. Is to Is it break. a lot of pressure for you guys? Yeah. I mean, like, do you, yeah, it I is. I don't think that you guys would be seasoned by now. You know, kind of like you know, it's, 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 you want to do well for different. Well, and you and you continue yeah. to get bigger too. So it's like you may be. 
seasoned when it's like, all right, you know, two to three hundred people in a comedy bar or whatever, but well, it's, I, I don't know the, the extent the of, you know, how, yeah. a thousand people is a lot of people. Here, here's the difference. People. If someone's like, can you and Brad have an intelligent discussion about this movie that you watch and have an informed and intelligent discussion, no problem. Yeah. Easy. But when you're at a comedy club or in a room where they want comedy, mm. you should have a joke like every like 10 to 15 seconds and being able to do that improvisationally I think is that's like pretty hard incredibly yeah. tough incredibly yeah. tough so the comedy expectations are what are what's really really hard it's, think, it's different like on a podcast we could talk for we could talk for hours about different things and I could say this is interesting this is fun this yeah. is thoughtful people don't want that at comedy they but want then, to fucking the laugh yeah. and that's yeah, it if they dude. listen to a podcast or in the grocery store great but if they're Comedy's at a comedy club objective. if they're at a comedy club that's not you don't get to do thoughtful it, stuff it's subjective but there's some shit that's just not funny if we're just having dialogue and we're not joking or laughing, it's not funny. No, that's what I'm saying. It's, oh, like, right. it's hard to appeal like <clears throat> right on the spot to... I mean, you have to know your audience. But that's like, the thing. It's, 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 I think you it's actually have club. to tell jokes. Yeah. You know, exactly. Like, At the comedy club, it's like you can't just be thoughtful and introspective and smart. It can't be informative. It has to be funny, 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 or else it's awkward. So that part of it is very... You might be able to just slide with some offensive shit. Like, <laughs> you know, if you, I feel like if you can get some ooh shit, like yeah, that might be as good as a laugh. Yeah. Yeah. So. But at PVD Fest, it's, uh, yeah, it's yeah, not going to be no, not so, PVD Fest. No, no, no. Wow, it's, it's, PVD? Like, it's like during the day. Yeah, it's, it's, like it's, it's a, are you saying PVD Fest? Or like it's a it's a festival that started in Providence like two years ago. They shut down the entire like downtown and like a hundred thousand right, right. people come into Providence. Like you literally, so you can't be offensive. Literally, it's, it's during the middle. Of the it's day. like really G rated right, comedy right. if you're going to do comedy. Yeah. like a whole bunch of guys that didn't know how to pull out. Just, yeah, sure, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So you can say that. Guys, so you yeah. can't say that at PVD Fest, right? Of course you can. Mom, what's pull out mean? Jesus Christ. So, yeah, so it's so that kind of stuff is hard. I mean, at the show on in Boston on Sunday, you know, we uh, it was a really sparsely attended show, and uh, people were really uptight. They weren't laughing at stuff, and everyone. I was like, these people's faces, they seem like they might be nice people. So I went up, and Brad was supposed to bring up the next comic after one guy went up. Then Brad's supposed to go up and be like, I'll oh, give it up to this guy. All right, now here's this guy. And I'm like, hey, I'm like, I'm going to go up in a second. He's like, okay. So instead, I was like, I'll oh, give it up for a little bit. I'm sorry, is this, I just want to follow. Is this when you're, you guys are doing stand up? This was uh, this past uh, this past Sunday in Boston. It was a comedy right. show. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a it, comedy show. It was a Chuck and Brad show, so it wasn't exactly stand up per mm -hmm. se, but right. it's us in a comedy club in front of a comedy audience right. doing right. our comedy. So. On a similar. stage, yeah, yeah very similar. similar. Okay. Sim similar setup. When you say your comedy, you, you, yeah, is there a specific? This was the it was Avengers the Avengers show. Okay. It was the Avengers okay. show. Oh, gotcha. So, oh, okay, the retelling. Yeah. yeah gotcha. So, so, but we had co comedians on it beforehand, so we were, you know, introducing them and bringing yeah. them up. And so, were you hosting it too? Yeah, we're hosting cool. it too. And so we went up, and uh, after one guy got off, I'm like, I'll give it up for you know Tyler or Logan, whoever. And I was like. I was like, all right, I'm like, I'm like, listen, I'm like, I know this, you know, I just, I just wanted to get through to the people, and I was like, listen, I know this show is, uh, you know, a small show, I know it's awkward to laugh, and there's a lot of people here. What we're gonna do is we're all gonna become friends right now. We're gonna find out about each other. I'm like, I'm gonna go through everyone here. We're gonna find out your name and a fun fact. So get it, get a fun fact ready. And I'm like, you sir, what is your, oh, what is so your name? That's so ballsy, dude. And he's like, he's like, uh, Gordon. I'm like, Gordon. I'm like, that would be my fun fact. I'm like, Gordon is a, <laughs> is a professional man. I'm like, if you're not a doctor, your parents are disappointed. That's what I'm telling you right now. And so so that kind of stuff, yeah. I guess is I guess you got the crowd ball rolling. Work. Right. Yeah. I guess yeah. it's crowd work. One hundred percent crowd work, dude. You know, and I was just trying to get people. I would be afraid to start personal. that. What if you know? Because I'd be. What if they're just like, nah, I'm good, dude. Well, Not that, gonna that, do this. That actually That's happened right. to one of the comics on our New York show, where he's yeah. like, hey, what do you do? And the guy's like, eh. he's like, you want to elaborate? He's like, nah. Yeah. That was it. And I'm like, <laughs> what, do what do you do? So if Why that was you, if that was you, what would you say as a comedian? Uh, I, I think I would, you know, I would start, probably start. I would make fun, fun of him. Oh, I would just be like, all right, well, like, all right, fuck you, buddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going next. <laughs> so, so, but that's not. Like, give it up for. <laughs> it's funny because I, you know, I, think... I, I think you could hypothesize uh, jobs that he has that he might be ashamed of. Yeah, and there you I go. Think that's the audience funny. would get behind that. <laughs> it's like, all right, you're a glory hole operator, aren't you, sir? Yeah, there you go. It's an example. Operator? Do they need an? Operator, we need what more gonna say, dude? in this yeah, glory hole, sir. Glory sir, hole, what? It's Milker? First come, first sir. Oh, wait, hold on. That was a pun. You yes. need a more applicable term, like technician. <laughs> there you go, there you go. I couldn't think of the word. That was it. Um, I like operator, but uh, technician. It's funny because I wasn't really doing it. I know it's going to sound weird. I wasn't doing it as a comedian. 
Right. I was doing it as I wanted to become entertainment. Per- well, it was like personal. Like, I wanted to make it warm in the room. I oh, right, right. Personal. You're just trying to but build maybe, a relationship. But maybe I'm get them wet. wrong. Get them wet. That's what that crowd. That's what crowd work is in general. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. You know. All right. I'm not a comedian, and I've never entered. I mean, I entertain everybody all the time, but I've never done it. <laughs> In that setting, that but what you, yeah, <laughs> what, yeah, what you just explained to me is crowd work. Like yeah, that's yeah, that yeah. would be like crowd to work. somebody as ignorant as me or, or as yeah. green in that industry. It sounds like crowd work. You're working the crowd, you know. Yeah, You're yeah, just yeah. getting them yeah. involved. Yeah. So, so I feel like that type of crowd work is something that I'm I've barely dipped my toe into. Me and Brad being energetic and kind of fun, you know, at the RA Food Fights events or at the Motif Food Truck Awards or whatever. Like, that's one thing, but, like, being on a comedy stage and having to, like, work the crowd and make them laugh, I think, is a lot more nuanced and difficult. Yeah. That's, and that's, that's definitely, it definitely takes a specific skill. Yeah. yeah really as a does. comedian, as a... You're almost saving the show, a, too, for everybody else. You know, like, everybody else is probably grateful of that. Yeah. Like, whoever comes out next is like, hey, thanks, man. Like, that crowd was fucking death out there. The yeah, I think, I think it's a positive. <laughs> I mean, it's funny because I'm actually... So, I've been in the band for 15 years, so we've played our share, you know, a fair share of terrible shows or really low attendance What part of the shows. band are you? I'm sorry. Are you the, I'm a lead vocals. singer. Lead singer. These vocals, singer man. Come on. You hear the fucking vocals on the sky? <laughs> the pipes? Yeah. The but, pipes on the sky? But our reputation is like a funny band. And yeah. so we talk a lot in between songs, but I kind of have this uh, crutch of the fact that there's other people in the band on stage that I interact with. Right. And so we've always had that reputation and so I'm, I hope What do you mean, crutch? Me, oh, just trying ba- to... Basically, like, if you're by yourself, you kind of just only relying on yourself. My crutch and was that I had someone I could talk to on stage and be uh, like, oh, what do you think about this? And blah, So blah, if blah, nobody like, laughs, I could kind of go, what are this you guy? thinking? Yeah, I know yeah. he's going to have my back. Yeah, exactly. Ha, 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 Josh. Like, it's, I think dialogue is either easier than just being the one person who's creating everything. Even with me and Brad on stage, yeah. I feel a lot better about, we can get into a, like a, a comedy game pretty easily. Yeah. Of mm-hmm. like me, you know, so how did you guys him. become friends? Like How, how did that? Uh, many years ago, uh, I lived in Indiana, then Illinois, then Arkansas. <laughs> Uh, and then out here, and I had done improv when I was in, uh, in or around Chicago. Uh, wasn't very good at it. Lacked confidence just in general. Uh, and then came out here and had like whenever anyone asked for a fun fact about me, I was like, oh, I do improv comedy, which was an exaggeration, lie, mm. yeah, right. possibly, possibly yeah. a lie, definitely an exaggeration. And I feel like yeah. you're setting yourself up. Most people are gonna be like, give us something right now, yeah. then what you got? I'm like, oh, I'm not on stage. Like that was that was kind of my thing. <laughs> And so uh, one, of, one of my coworkers said, oh, there's a group in Newport that is having auditions. Do you want to go audition with me? And I was like, yes, absolutely. Because at the time, I had been in New England for like nine months. I had virtually no friends. And I was like, I, I need to do something. Right. Like I'm just sitting at home and, and watching Scrubs over and over again. And so I went and auditioned for this group in Newport and got added to the group and started doing shows no with them. Hit me. Meanwhile, uh, yes. Chuck was in a band uh, and had been making these comedy videos. And one of the guys that was band adjacent and later in the guys. band, sorry, listening, just need us. It's fine. Uh, was was in my improv group. Yeah, the, and, my bassist at the time and, was and in Brad's so, improv group. Yeah, gotcha. Is that were, how you yeah. met? Yeah, uh, yeah. So, okay. I, so I went to one of the improv shows, saw Brad, and was like, "Oh, we need like a, a conservative nerdy guy in our videos because we were doing those comedy videos, and like the band kind of had this hey. reputation of being like obscene and kind of mm. crazy, and like, oh, this guy would be a funny counterweight. Yeah, in terms Dude. of you know being uh, pressuring us to be better people. That sounds like us. You know, like we're kind of hilarious and obscene, and we just needed a nerdy guy. So who's that, George? Yeah. I'm in. Are you gonna, gonna graduate? Hey, you're good with George names, huh? I think we only said his name when you first is got there, here. Is there any? There's no camera on George, huh? Nah, he's smart. He's Does smart he always dude. mix in his tidy whiteies like this? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, nah, he's that. Yeah. I, mean, I wouldn't call them whiteies anymore. Yeah. I mean, it all. Yes. yeah. Without him, there'd be much of. So that's cool. So you you yeah. went to the improv show and you were like. This guy's like, funny. And, and this guy's I was funny yeah? shit. I was, because res- I was Were like, you doing it solo, the improv no, show? No, no, it no. Was, it was a group. And that's, you know, Chuck talked about like having the comfort of other people on stage in the form of a band. But when you're doing improv, especially what we were doing, you know, you are a character mm-hmm. for between three and 35 minutes. And you're with other people. And like the job of improv is to support each other. And so if I go right. out and I'm doing something that gets no laughs, like somebody's gonna come out and support it, and maybe they get a laugh, and but like save you. Almost, yeah, kinda. kind of. And you know, and now I'm to the point where I'm like, I'll I'll just break the fourth wall. And like, we, I did a I did a, a scene several weeks ago, and I made a joke about like putting fentanyl in a Dr Pepper, like as a way to get people addicted to Dr Pepper. <laughs> And like ninety percent of the crowd was the like overdose family did. survivors. Like, that was exactly what happened. And, it was and at an NA meeting. 
<laughs> he's like, hey, guys. Called me out. And she's like, hey, you know, opioid, like, why are you doing this? I'm like, you know, good point. I was just, like, it was a joke about Norton, Massachusetts. Like, I didn't mean to Oof. offend him. And I'm, like, talking about it, like, on stage. And she's like, why didn't you use caffeine as your joke? I'm like, I don't know. It didn't seem strong enough. And there's already caffeine in Dr. Pepper. And so, like, I, like, I totally understand where you're going with I, it. Like, I, it makes sense. I it left just... the stage and, like, Did came you get back booed on. off or no? No, no. I, I came back on with, like, my shirt tied around my waist instead of, uh, you know, my flannel tied around my waist. And I was like, oh, I'm not Brad. I'm his twin brother who doesn't say offensive things. And the crowd, like, got behind me. <laughs> oh, shit. As, like, yeah. this weird meta commentary right and, and they understood save. that I genuinely like didn't it, you were trying I, 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 right. like, the joke was about how terrible I also, Norton is here's well, yeah, my yeah, question yeah. And this is, don't take this as an insult too late I think you're that a sometimes, fucking idiot <laughs> it's like prefix and no offense but yeah. I think that sometimes when you do a joke you can't be like I did a joke and people didn't laugh so it was offensive no I, how many people were in the audience uh 12, three 12, 12. 13 Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll say you this. can't judge off that. Well, no way. Yeah, but when the other performers call me out on it, then I have to like be on board with them and be like, oh, okay. That's... Oh yeah, for this for the scene. It's just I, knowing your crowd for, too. For, for you the know? scene, you did Probably. the right thing. That's not even a crowd. Twelve. For the for yeah, the, for the scene, bro. It, it is it right is, here. It, it, it is for him. <laughs> For the scene, for no. yeah. For the scene, you're doing the right thing. Uh, I, 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 you know. Uh, and I, 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 because I, I am not personally connected to anyone who's died of an opioid overdose. What is fentanyl? It's fentanyl, right? Fentanyl. What is it? Fentanyl. It's, it's a drug. Like, I, 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 like right. it's, 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 it's like an opioid. Powder. Yeah, it's this getting, so it's getting mixed with. Like, this is what it is. I can tell you. Well, it's, it, well it's, kind of. It's, it's getting mixed. Meth. It's, it's getting mixed cocaine. with drugs. To make and, it stronger. Yeah, to make it stronger, but it's killing everybody, especially oh, in this part of the country. That's not funny. I'm not kidding. I'm sorry for offending you. I'm not kidding. I know from the doctor. Well, like, you know what? Why are you grinning? <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> so I, I have a question. Joke around I'm about heart kidding. attacks? I'm not kidding. I know him. I, I, I have an honest I, question though for yeah. you. So uh, we because I've experienced something pretty similar where we had you know a listener reach out to me and say hey this is what you said it was offensive yada yada yada. Really? Yeah. You Can you know, tell me what it is? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Um, somebody. He said the word. We were talking. He's asking me, motherfucker. <laughs> so we we were talking about what we would do if we won the lottery, and I said, "Well, the first thing oh my I'm God, doing get rid of the Jews." Wow. Oh, no, I said, "Are you Jewish? You look Jewish." Jewish no. I said, I said the first thing. The first thing I would do is find a Jew to make sure all my money is safe oh, and secure. Kind of Interesting. It can be kind of offensive, yeah. but... It's complimentary, it, to tell you the truth. <laughs> it's like they're good money managers. Like, yeah. the stereotype is like, hey, they're good money... It's like if I'm if I'm in gym class and it's like you or the tall black guy, who do you think I'm picking first? Uh, 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 basketball or are you playing? Anything. Uh, I'm uh, the uh, player. <laughs> Does it fucking matter what we're playing? You know, if it's anything, <laughs> it's, then it's then anything. that's not offensive. I'll, no. I'll say this. There was one African-American gentleman in my gym class. He lost one game of one... African-American? Yeah, it was. Dude, it was to me. How long has his family been in America? African American. <laughs> All right, he lost. He lost to me. No one else. Just me. He lost so, to you. Yeah, I was, wow. I was the only you one. Had well, you had racquetball in gym class. Playing one. one. I was. Uh, you must have went to a rich school where they had golf. Uh, oh, they were playing there dodgeball. Was, there was golf. No, it was it was one on one basketball, and I beat him because I don't believe it. He didn't he, because he he didn't call any fouls for the last forty seconds. And oh. I just missed. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> Punching him in the nuts. No. His uh, forearms are all, all right. sore. I'll also say, in in like ninth grade or something, I had watched a lot of Comedy Central, and I knew that you know, uh, Jewish people had certain stereotypes, but I didn't understand that like Jewish people would also be offended if you mentioned them, and so I made a joke like, like what? in the hallway about good like honestly, I think it was about being cheap. And, uh, uh, of course, that's yeah, like... Right. Yeah. And I had no idea, again, that this was like an offensive stereotype. And this guy grabbed me and like slammed me up against the locker. I'm like, I just heard it on Comedy Central. Like, oh, well, now you've got new material, though, because right. now they're fucking aggressive also. Oh, <laughs> like, my God. You, you cheap, know, and, aggressive and, motherfuckers. And, and, that's funny. And I learned my lesson. That's all. So that's that's what the question I wanted to ask is, if if you offend somebody, do you now start like Curtail. second guessing your, your uh, comedy? No. Or do you just accept that, hey, like that person just doesn't like my... Sense think, of humor. I think it depends. I think it depends yeah. on this, this, the this, audience, right? This is what ultra progressive people would say. They would say that we're in a new era of sensitivity, and that if you're funny, if you're actually funny and you're actually clever, then you will find ways to joke without using stuff that's going to offend someone. That's mm. that's basically the new ultra PC way to look at it. I would say it. we're 
ultra progressive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then, then there's like secondary things of like, you know, uh, did you guys know the stand-up comic Anthony Jeselnik? He's, he's a stand-up comic. He yeah, he show. was just on Rogan um, yeah, like two days ago. Yeah, he Comedy Central, too. He has a show. Yeah, he had a show called special. The Jeselnik Offensive. He's on all the roasts. He's a great comedian. He's a he's a great, clever comedian. Does he have a Netflix <laughs> special? Yes, yeah. he does. It he's just not the out. one that's always like yeah, joking always about being a rapist, is yeah, he? Yeah, like yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. So he <laughs> likes to be offensive. That's like part of his comedy. Bro, but he's like over the oh, top. I heard Yeah, so he doesn't believe in like the idea of apologizing. Um, for for jokes, and I think a lot of people that are comedians kind of don't believe in the idea of apologizing for jokes. And I think you basically have to make the the you know the decision yourself. Like for me, I don't really ever say anything ever that's racist. It's just not like yeah. where my comedy goes. I heard you guys just uh, you were talking about that on your last episode that you would. Or I think you were podcast. on a podcast yeah, that there were some racial jokes. Oh, yeah. yeah, and one of you guys. Um, I can't remember which one made like a Lou. You have a friend that's Lou in Lou. Bag. Yeah, 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 the yeah, Lou yeah, bag joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I was telling him that before you got here. I'm like, hey, why not might... racial jokes? I it just, it's just first of all, I guess the first thing is it's not that funny to me because it's kind of the same thing over and over again. Yeah, it's kind of almost you know what I mean? same. It's almost like how often are you gonna really laugh at a new fat joke? Like that's like like. It's Bro, not gonna be that thank funny. you, man. I've been it's trying just, to figure that shit out like, forever. Well, like, but fat, to me, fat jokes and racist jokes are the same kind of thing. I agree. You I'm going to play the fat uh, card from now on. <laughs> isn't that why John Candy's funny? Chris Farley? Uh, but, fat is funny. But yeah, but yeah, I agree. Hey, we're, Tom, f- we're funny. Tom, Tommy Boy? No funny anymore. Yeah, well, Tommy Boy is funny, and him kind of moving the way he does, yeah, and moving and a, running that, down the funny. stairs, that's not a fat joke. That's physical comedy. He's not... Because Jim something. Carrey does the same shit, and he's not I don't fat. Know. Exactly. Jim Put Carrey. It this way. Exactly. If, if Chris Farley slimmed down... Or if John Candy slimmed down. Yeah, Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey is very slim, and he's fucking uh, incredible at physical comedy. If Jim Carrey is like, but he's up there. He's a different. He's a whole different breed. He's talented beyond. He does impressions. I I agree. I agree. Mm. But I do think that the physical comedy of Chris Farley and the physical comedy of Jim Carrey is kind of similar. I I can understand. I can see that. There's something funny about a fat guy doing some shit. Like, if you do the worm right now, it's like, hey, that's impressive. Fact if I do it, worm. it might be pretty funny to watch. Yeah, uh, sure, mm-hmm. I agree with that. But I think that the wordplay of a racist joke, fat joke, stuff like that, it's really, tired, really hard. Just, yeah, exactly. It's kind of it. tired. There's that, and there's the fact that it's like, it's not quite as... If it's not accepted by the culture in general, or people are not as interested in it, then it's hard to make that funny, which is why True. like something like a roast, where that stuff is mm-hmm. kind of saved up, and then used at the roast as like normal, <laughs> it almost hits harder because extremely clever people are using these jokes to to kind of use them and celebrate them in a very reserved setting. You know what I mean? You might see a Comedy hmm. Central roast, not even not even anymore, but like maybe once a year. Yeah. And like that makes sense because you get like people like Jezelnik. Yeah. He had a, you know he had a back and forth with Patrice O'Neill. Like I said, I don't really like racist jokes, and. Uh, Anthony Jeselnik was saying all these jokes, and Patrice O'Neill, uh, who is like you know one of the best damn comedians of all time, this big fat black comedian, said something like about the up the roast. And he said, "There's too many white people." He said, "He said uh, there's too many white people here." And Anthony Jeselnik turned to him and he said, "Too many white people? You know what? No one ever says not enough black people." <laughs> and it was so fast. <laughs> and Witty. shocking and in the moment and stuff like that <laughs> that that caught me and made me laugh because it's two people who know each other right. and like each other yeah. and there's an exchange it's not really of, a stereotype at that yeah, point exa- it's yeah, kind of just not, a yeah, exa- it's, it's an exchange of that has like a What's the word I'm looking for? Where something has an arena. It has an arena of right. this roast. But otherwise, like, I, I imagine, like, I think of similar stuff if someone went up on stage as a comedian and started saying, you know, black jokes or, or fat jokes or... It just doesn't seem as funny to me. And it's something that I never got into to the point where we even did an episode about... Like, Chris Rock, Chris Rock's known for his racial Right, and that's... Jokes. It's a little bit more commentary, though. That's a little bit more commentary, and that comes with an insight. You know what I mean? It doesn't come with a, an insulting kind of tone to it but like i even think we did an episode about how i think i'm like i'm like bad at racism like there are racist terms that people have used around me what that i'm are like you trying I, to be good at racism well, i'm like i, I, don't, <laughs> really, like, I don't know what they I'm mean bad, i'm really working on imagine this guy I'm from Indiana and i've really been trying to train him but, <laughs> <laughs> but imagine like you know some, someone has used a racist like slur around me and i didn't know what, what it meant what was the slur? I don't remember what it was. You want to write it and I'll say it if you I don't, don't want to say I don't, it. I don't remember. Well, this is a couple years ago yeah, with this was. episode. But like, there's some of them that I don't know. What you are know, you typing there? Was it a slur? Uh, no. 
<laughs> to what group? Uh, Asians? I, I didn't remember? know. Oh. I didn't know. That's, that's, that's like every. Yeah. That's my. That's my. Like gook, no. chink, <laughs> nip. Just say, <laughs> yeah, just say your morning prayer. You'll get all of them. All that's, them. that's my whole point. Is that I, they said a race? They said a racial slur. I didn't even know what it was. You know who's the best racial joke teller that I've ever seen? It like on one of those roasts, fucking Martha Stewart, when she was going yeah, at Snoop yeah. Dogg. That was incredible. Well, yeah. she had, that, see the Betty roast, White. Oh, true, yeah. true. They, they, I mean, that they, was have, a joke, they have these comedy writers that are excellent. Oh, that's true, right? Absolutely yeah. amazing. You, you know, know what? You just so. ruined everything genius. for me. I, for the, up until was... now, I'm like, Martha Stewart's fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So, no, but so that, that was good. So racist stuff never appealed to me. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's funny because, like, the stuff that I would say that's offensive, what, what do I say? Because well, I, 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 I would generally say... think of myself as someone that, like, People would think like dances on the line of of um, yeah, of, obscene. of obscene obscenity. But what kind of jokes? Are I, really, I, I, I find think, it strange that a comedian I, has, I has boundaries. On the line. I, think, like, I, think, I don't think it is boundaries because I don't give a shit. It's, I think like, it's just say, his perspective on humor. You let's know, say, like, let's it's say we were writing us because we wear all of our sets together. Yeah. Yeah. So his set, my set. Sure. If he was like, yeah, he's like, let's joke about uh, Joe Biden. I'd be like. No, well, that's a touchy subject. But no, yeah. thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a touching I, I, subject. I, I, I'm not even. I have no interest touchy in that. Subject. I have no interest. I'm so in that. stupid. It took me a minute. Yeah. And if he said like, let's have it, let's have a joke about if you're a caveman and you're really horny, you wanted to have sex with a dinosaur. I'm like, that is funny to me. Let's talk about that. <laughs> what, like that would be uh, very. What kind of dinosaur you're would you go humor for? It's very well. innocent. It almost seems like. See, but I'm not talking about cavemen having sex with dinosaurs. Uh, <laughs> a slow one. <laughs> what kind of dinosaur would you have sex with? It's you on a pterodactyl. You're one cloth around your leg. Maybe a bonosaurus. <laughs> a bonosaurus. Yeah. I thought I could catch him. <laughs> I think I, I think uh, Chuck, uh, in particular, is is less about offensiveness and more about obscenity. Like that's the line he walks more than. Uh, like, what, what's your most obscene joke? Oh, I had a joke about how jacking off. Basically, what jacking off is 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 basically playing a joke on your dick. Because you're tricking it into thinking that you're actually having sex. It's just using your imagination. Jesus Christ. And the whole joke revolves around the fact that, like, my dick, like, knows, like, that I'm not very attractive. So then if I try to pretend I'm having sex with a supermodel, I can't come because my dick is like, yeah. All right. And, 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 and you just my turned dick... my... I, when we were just talking about, I'm like, bro, he probably doesn't even curse. Like, it, this, so dick, it is... And my dick is, like, like basically, like, I have to, like, imagine, like, a lice-infested garbage woman... Because then my dick will believe that it might be actually happening. Oh my god! That's my joke. That's yeah. really wow. fucking obscene. Yeah. <laughs> that, but it's not that really... goes on in your head. But it's not really slightly turned on it's not really right now, dude. It's just a... slightly. Well, I mean, it's maybe offensive to a lice infested garbage woman. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, he doesn't even use the expression garbage woman. He says female garbage man. <laughs> well, you know what? Female <laughs> garbage man. We actually talked about this on one of our previous episodes. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> Viva. Couldn't anything, almost any any material, no matter what it is, somebody could find that. Yeah. Offensive. No, no matter what you're saying. I think uh, I think that basically you can go super clean and, and like I'll put it this way, like Jim Gaffigan. You know who that is? Yes. Jim Gaffigan. If he jokes about how much he likes sandwiches, who's that going to offend? Well, no. What I'm saying is that hmm. could, anything Vegans. that he's could, could there kind of sandwiches he's eating. Yes. Fucking vegans, they get offended about everything. Mm-hmm. Vegans? You guys well, that's vegans? true. I mean, like, if he's eating... We had, if he's uh, my vegan, friend's a vegan. Meat. She was on a couple yeah, weeks ago. You could find that offensive. <clears throat> yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think that that's, that's accurate. I, I mean, I know what you're talking <laughs> like, about. You guys are idiots. Yeah. So vegans aren't going to be offended. No, 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 I know what you mean. If, if you're making fun of and criticizing something, then yeah. that could be found offensive by anyone. And I, I honestly, like, what you're kind of leading towards is something I agree with, where if, if Anthony Jeselnik makes a joke about a dead baby and someone stands up and says... My baby died. You can't make a joke about that. Then I'd be like, "Fuck you off!" You have to. Well, you have to say. <laughs> then I'm not going to be able <laughs> to make a joke off. about anything. Cancer. Yeah. I'm not going to be able to make a joke about AIDS. I'm not going to be able to joke about this because every single person. Right. Well, so everyone's going to have a fentanyl as a, per, as a personal. <laughs> yeah, but you kind of went to the fentanyl overdose capital of the country and made that joke, bro. <laughs> so gonna, like I'm not going to San Francisco making gay jokes, what dude. What I'm saying is like <laughs> basically. If you say this t- this subject is <clears throat> is too offensive because I'm personally touched by it, someone is personally touched by everything yeah. you're saying. That nothing you can't make fun of anything. So yeah, idea, you're either um, offensive or you're not. Exactly. You so the idea is the like, either joke about everything or joke about nothing. Yeah, I and I, I do agree yeah. with that, but. I'm not interested in, in racial, politics. Right. I'm not interested in race. Uh, you know, there's, there's certain things, and there's probably other stuff that if I really thought about it, yep. like I would be able to figure out like something I'm not really interested in joking about that has nothing to do with offensiveness. It's not even That's kind of the beauty of comedy. Is it, exactly everybody you has religious. Yeah, like, uh, not really. He does religious jokes. I, I do. Yeah, uh, but like not pro well, religion. But before, like before I, we move I, on to that, I'm though, practicing I have a... Christian, so like I can I can speak from that side of things. Yeah, uh, which you know it's not a lot. 
lot in well, the comedy like, scene. You, you, said, you but, joke in, but if somebody if somebody made well, he has a, a joke, joke about Noah having a threesome with the two elephants. <laughs> I wish you did. <laughs> Thanks for two ruining <laughs> two of every uh, creature. <laughs> Just because Noah was in the threesomes. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it takes a lot to... If the joke is clever and it, like, disparages Christianity, yeah. fine. If right. you're just like, hey, being Christian is dumb. Like, I don't think that's clever. Yeah, like, right. as a comedian or a Christian. So that's kind of where I'm, I'm coming from. One of the things, uh, you know, we talk about laugh at everything or laugh at nothing. Yeah. And uh, one of the, the phrases I heard was, was basically... If you're willing to make the joke, you have to be willing to deal with the consequences of having made that joke. So sure. if you're yeah, like, oh, sure. I'm going to make this joke that might offend some people, and if they're offended, like, I personally generally feel bad. Well, that's yeah. what I was going to ask so you. I so have to when somebody's offended, so how, how do you, all right, so that's that's your approach to it. You say, okay, well, I'm going to alter yeah. my things and not we offend did, them. We did something live that offended a lot of people. Because yes, the, the woman that was a offended lot. by what I said about, you know, the Jew comment saying, hey, because, again, I'm not... You know, like I don't mean anything malicious to Jews. It's just a stereotype that I I made a joke about. See, I, um, you know, I don't and even I'm, say the word Jew. Like I'll say I'll say like Jewish person. I would I wouldn't say the word Jew. Yeah. Well, right? I'm I'm Colombian. If somebody makes a joke about Colombian people and cocaine, yeah. like I'm not offended by it. Right. But I can't glue. I can't accept I can expect we'll everybody else to have the same. Hey man. <laughs> <laughs> Are you so, talking about other things that he does? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> I thought you didn't make fat jokes, bro. <laughs> It. You just fucking see what you. That's the, hey. That's how you rub off on people. <laughs> no. So what I did is is I'm not I'm not really sorry for the joke. All I do is reach out to her and tell her that I'm sorry she didn't find it funny. Yeah. You know, and I didn't mean anything malicious by it. like I I I don't know if I have Jewish friends or I love them because I don't care if my friends like I don't know. Right. right. I just my friends are my friends. I don't that's, really know what their religion or their nationality is. Really fast. Does, but I'm does not the audience. Anybody who listens, don't they have a responsibility to take things in context? I, I agree that they do have a responsibility well, to take in context. No matter what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, but I can't but, I can't like, no demand they find it funny. And if they don't, that's fine. You don't have I I'm here's, glad that you listened and reached out to me, but I'm not I can't I'm not gonna change, you know, like the, here, the kind of jokes that I or the I can't right, change what I think is funny. Well here's the thing. So I, I agree with you, context is important and I think some people purposely take stuff out of context. Like yeah, just when, to, when James Gunn have was a fired from the Guardians of the Galaxy, do you know about that? Yeah. No. Basically, the the director and writer of the first two Guardians of the Galaxy movies, which which were monstrous successes, right. box office smash. Mm -hmm. It's the just director James Gunn, who directed uh, what Splice, Slither, Slither, and uh, some other Slither. stuff. And he was a writer. Mm -hmm. And like ten years ago, he made jokes on Twitter that were like basically like kind of like pedophilia jokes, just a joke right. about him like banging a little kid, whatever. Ooh, and someone that's a weird someone dug approach. him up from ten years ago. Way before this, and Disney fired him as the director of Guardians of the Galaxy Three. Well, Disney's very progressive, right? right? Aren't they? No, they're not progressive. Yeah, they're fa family friendly. They're more yeah. like family friendly, which I think is almost the opposite of progressive. Yeah. Um, but uh, almost like they're not looking. They're not but, attacking but him the for it. They just don't want that exactly, attached exactly. to yeah, their we, name. We don't so, want to be a so the context, I think, is that they're. They, I think they're completely ignoring context, and that it was unfair to do mm. that. He's writing rated R movies at that time, and he's writing funny scripts. The idea that that comedian. Who, which he is. He's a, he's a comic writer who's getting. Yeah, paid somebody to write ran with it. Ten years ago, before yeah. you know. So I think that just, there was no context there. However, with what you're talking about, if someone listens to your show and you say, "If I win the lottery, I'm going to get a Jew to take care of my money," it doesn't. The context might not matter to that person. Where they might say, "I don't like that someone talks like that, mm. or characterizes people like that, or thinks like that," and that context is that's accurate context, and that's up to them. And do I think they should be able to reach out and write to you and say that I'm offended? I do think that. Of course, do I dude. I, I'll, right always, say, I'll always welcome that. Do I think that yeah. you have the right to say that this is my show and I do my show the way I want to do it? I think that that's okay, too. And then you both have to be okay if that person says, well, I'm not going to listen then. Or yeah, you know that, what I mean? Yeah. That's kind of where I left it at. But you it's, know, it's, it's up to you because, you know, there's a there's a band called No Effects that we were just talking about, mm -hmm. Fat Mike. They went to, they played Las Vegas there's last year. There's a lot year. of fat being thrown around. I'm just... They played in Las Vegas last year, and they made they they're known as a very funny band. They push a lot of boundaries. Fat Mike is borderline hateful on stage sometimes. He's he's I've seen him say at shows. Is anyone here Christian? Leave the show. I don't want any Christians at this show. Oh, shit. Right? We've seen him say stuff like that, right? And he's also he tries to be offensive. He tries to be funny. Yeah. And at this Las Vegas show, he basically made a joke about how with the Las Vegas shootings, at least it was country fans, right? Ooh. And yeah. basically, so he was doing this punk rock tour. He just, it's a huge, it's a huge band doing a huge punk rock tour. All the sponsors of the tour, 
dropped off and they had to cancel all the rest of the dates of the of the festival because he said that now that's mm. to me that's not something that he's like I stand behind my art I wanted to say this I should be able to say this that's not what like it is too it, soon it's, it's <laughs> that he went on stage in front of thousands of people that he does every night they make jokes every night on stage mm. to thousands of people they try to be offensive every night he was probably drunk and he was probably mm. just saying whatever came to his head so I do think sometimes people who are comedians bands anyone who's in a public setting that consistently has the mm. responsibility of entertaining might say something offensive and be like, I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, if you make a mistake, where <clears throat> on the flip side, like <clears throat> I've also been educated on you know shit that I've said where it's like, all right, I can see how, right. even though like I didn't realize it was offensive right. and it wasn't really part of my joke, you know, right. just the, the words that I use are offensive and that I could kind of backtrack exactly, on. Exactly, right. But if I'm telling you a joke, you know, and I intend to deliver it the way that I intend to, I'm yeah. probably not going to backtrack on that. Right. It, well, that's 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 a that's a that's a good thing too because like you know. That, that's part of it, I think. And I think yeah. that what you're talking about is something where people were not super uh, okay with that for a little while. Where, where they said, like, where they would say something, like, let's say, there's a gay slur that I think was very common 15 years ago in school. Okay. And now, no, not gay. Fag. <laughs> yeah. And, it, yeah, and, like, now it's, it's like... so funny. No one, throw it out there. No one says it, ever. Like, it's, it's like, very... No, you can't. Yeah. You can't like, really it's just, say it. It's just not anymore. Yeah. And I think that people are just like, okay, that's fine. Like we'll, we'll 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 stop saying that because it's offensive to people, and I think that some things mm. are going to be like that. And if you think if you're like, you know what, like I'm not hateful. I don't think that I don't think anything poorly about Jewish people. This is something I said. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Then that's your call. And I also believe you. I believe a lot of times people say things that are offensive when there's no hate in their hearts. Right, right. Oh, and absolutely. it's up to them to kind of figure out what's uh, what's okay and what's not. So I, I the it person is, that he's actually talking about is actually a friend of his. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And, you know. She uh, might be Jewish. I just don't know. I don't go up to my friends and ask, hey, are you Jewish? Because it doesn't matter Jewish. to me. Is she Jewish? <clears throat> Why else would she be offended? I don't know, bro. Like, I have, you know, black nephews. If you go around calling them niggas, I'll get offended, but I'm not black. You know, she just Josh might, She just might have Jewish people that she cares about. And she could be offended for a lot of reasons. You know, you don't. I have gay friends. I'm not gay. I'll still be offended if you're calling people faggots. You know, like it's. She just might have people nah, that she cares about that are Jewish. I think. I think it's possible. Yeah, it's definitely possible to care. But she also about might that. be Jewish. You're right. She has a lot of money. Bad timing or what? <laughs> No, I'm kidding. It's uh, yeah. No, I think that that's you know, there's 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 some sense in what you're talking about, where the idea of like, well, you don't have to be, you know, let's say Jewish to be offended by that. You might be just offended mm. in general. Especially now, there are a lot of progressive people that are kind of making sure that they speak up whenever they can. But you would think a friend would would be like, okay, obviously we're friends. We've hung out. We've drank together. We've whatever. Like, yeah. take things in context. Like, you know, you know this person. You guys hang out. Mm. A lot of it's times, though, like, you know what though? A lot of times, I think it is a thing where like, you know, I'm not gonna call him out but let's say brad say some, said something really really offensive and i know there's no hate in his heart for this group of people that he was talking about yeah Those filthy I might, bags. I might be like hey man like like maybe you shouldn't say that like that's that could be offensive regardless of what yeah. i think about his personal feelings and it's almost like kind of trying to be helpful yeah i, yeah. I, yeah, yeah, no, I, think, I think chuck and i over the past you know 10 or 12 years like over the time of our friendship our our as society has grown and evolved we've kind of grown and evolved with exactly. it and, and sometimes we've been kind of nudged in the right direction and sometimes it's it's been a bolt from the blue and you know realizing like oh, okay well i can't say this thing anymore or i can't use yeah. this phrase anymore or i can't joke about this topic anymore okay uh there's still that's so the, many other funny things that's kind of how i feel oh like, yeah there's yeah. tons of yeah. Yeah. like a weird one is um like a weird one for me there's two of them gay is a weird one because i grew up and like you know and i was in 1988 i was 14 and south park was starting and i said things are gay Right, yeah. like that's oh, that's gay. I don't want to watch. That. I think that's we all gay. did. Yeah. Right, that was a very like. And now, and now that people are like, hey, it's not cool, and like, there's so much like you know backlash against that. I pretty much dropped it from my vernacular. Yeah, I used to say retarded all the time, and now yeah. I don't say yeah. retarded anymore because people are offended. And it's weird because there's almost a question of like, you know, is, is there someone out there who's like, we should fight for retarded. We should be able to say this. Right. I, what is the logic behind that? And it's almost to the point where I'm just like, I don't care though. Like, like, I yeah. The word myself. isn't important enough to you where you need exactly. to say if, it. If if someone it. is really offended by that or has the uh, you know the possibility, the potential of being offended by that, why do I? Why am I protecting my free speech of using this word that might offend somebody? Who cares? But is it? A, well, I think is, it could you know, be no a thing. What, I can drop it. That could line it, always keeps moving. Say. Like, could it no be matter a thing what, of where that what, line <clears> goes. Sure. I mean, I, and I and I hate using you know 
this term. But there, somebody was recently criticized. She was on a, a school board or whatever. She used the word colored people. She said it during the school. They yeah. got really, really, she got all kinds of shit and backlash. And and I'm like, wow, this, I don't know. What do we call, what do we call I, I just say black. No, I just say black. Black, African, I don't even well, because, know. Because, I mean, yeah, I for fuck's sake, like, oh, African American, like, context. This, this person and his, his family, his parents, his grandparents, they could be six generations in America and never known Africa. I'm not calling them African American. You know, you look at the care, NAACP, yeah. it's don't the, you know, don't you for imagine, colored people. If you, That's told, how they, if you told me, you're like, my preferred ethnicity that you refer to me is African American. I wouldn't second guess it for a second. I don't yeah, then shit. it's like no biggie. Like for whatever, whatever you I want. I don't say Irish. So I just, I you care. know what I, I look like, at it? I, I feel like American. I learn a lot from my, my kids. You know, like I have two sons. They're nine and five. And they, I don't know if you guys have kids, but there there comes an innocence with them. And Together? Right now, if, I, <laughs> if, I'm look, if I'm looking at you, I'm going to say, hey, man, you know, he has dark hair and he has glasses. And my kids come home and they're like, oh, you know, he has dark, he has black skin or he has brown skin. Sure, sure. It's different. literally yeah. they're describing something. Yeah, and his grandmother sometimes will say, don't say that. And I'm like, listen, lady, back the fuck up. Don't put a stigma to what, because he's just talking. Right. Yeah, he, there's yeah, no, in your head. Yeah, like that's, that's exactly like yeah, he's, that's, that's for, it's the same thing as him saying, oh, she had blonde hair or red hair. Yeah. You know, he's just describing what he sees and sure. there's, there's, no hate in his heart but when you say hey don't say that you're almost like programming that into him so i i don't know i i kind of just i'll say black or spanish or yeah. because or asian i mean i, what, I, I learned it, the term uh latinx like two huh? weeks ago and what i've never like, heard that it's it's it's, a uh, word. It's, it's when you're referring to either uh like a, a latina <laughs> or latin latino, triple x but latinx is like the culture because if you say latino it's gendered as male if you say latina it's gendered as female latinx. Oh, i don't think we have time to get into that one I know, right now covers all that but i'm like i legitimately because i'd only see the word written i'm like i thought the word was pronounced latinx like I didn't know Latinx. at all, and uh, and you know, Latinx. my friends were like, "Okay, well, that's really funny that you thought that." And I'm like, "Well, I learned, and I'm I'm going from that." And I'm yeah. sure there are I other think, funny things to say. Yeah, and, and not that I made a ton of Latino it's, jokes. It's weird. Some, some <laughs> Latino is, jokes are great. My he still Latin calls blood. him Spicks, dude. Like Ooh, you're so right. you're so, you're doing so good compared to him. If if, if someone's you know, I have the uh, wherewithal to know that you're not supposed to say colored. Do I believe that someone who's maybe over the age of 50 or 60 doesn't know? Why uh, here, here's, here's what I think. The NAACP, the last two two letters, it stands for colored people. And then, so they call themselves colored. <clears throat> There's also a National Association they? for Retarded yes. People, right? Uh, children. <laughs> retarded children. Yeah. Okay, so they call themselves retarded. So is it, I mean, is it really offensive or are we making it offensive? Uh, I, well, there's a question of, yeah, let's talk about the NAACP. Yeah. Is it such a historic organization that they're not going to change their acronym because of that? Because no one ever says the entire thing and they always say NAACP. Right, true, that, true. That's fine. What I'm saying is that, okay, so if you're advert, as a group, as a let's say as a group, well, I don't, yeah. African, I don't, I don't, but I don't there is it, no group. Yeah, I don't think it... it uh, well, I'm saying African Americans, right. if you're advertising to... Other groups, mm. Chinese people, white people, Spanish people, whoever. And you're saying, <laughs> I was so worried. And I heard I'm like, oh, no. Uh, if you're, if, if, he's like, the Chinese people. <laughs> the Chinese people. Well, I, think, I, think, I think that the real, the real answer to the Those question. The Nigerians. And somebody's calling you colored. I, I, think, I think that the real answer to your question is something that I think about a lot. And that's like, what, what ethnicity do you most closely align? with uh, hmm. actually in all honesty because i'm 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 first generation american my father's irish why filipino right, I know. so depending on who i'm hanging out with I, <laughs> <laughs> I could be i could be a spick a guinea a fucking I, I feel, a mica. I mean, I, i'm also like you know french portuguese like a bunch of different things i can see you mix it too because of the dark hair yeah, and, you know yeah. yeah but the thing Big is dick. i think that sometimes you can't take someone let's say let's say in general uh, a spanish person you can't take a spanish person and be like oh your group of people said this because that's assigning a weird responsibility to an individual that has nothing to do with them individually. So let's say, yeah. as a Wait, culture, is people, it weird to say group? Yeah, like, I think I, I think it's weird too. No, it's not. Weird, it's not weird to say the word group. It's weird to say, like, let's say you know a black guy who's twenty three right now, and he's like, "Hey, your people say the NAACP, right? You, what was your vote in that?" And he's gonna be like, "Oh, that has nothing to do with me. I'm an individual." And so when you say colored person to that guy, but then try to defend it because someone... So what do they mean when they say colored people? 
Well, it, it's up to them. I mean, that's up to that's the responsibility. <laughs> yeah. That's the responsibility of that group of deciding to do that. So let's say. But aren't true. we saying the same thing then? No, I think we're not because you, I'm talking I, about the I, fact. I also think there's a difference in you know being in a, a majority white culture. That as a uh, you know, and especially for me, like I'm a white guy, I yeah. have I have no say. That's kind oh, of how shit. I feel too. Yeah. Well, no, is. I am the whitest. So, so like, from so Indiana, you see his dick. Just so yeah. I, <laughs> 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 he can't see his dick. <laughs> oh, that was a race joke. No, was it? Chuck. No, it's, uh, that was a that was a white guy joke. What, yeah, white is a race, bro. But Chuck, oh, but, but, but Chuck's, Chuck's a member. Of Chuck race. said white people have small dicks. What That's what just happened. What is that color? Ed and Brad. Um, uh, I was just kidding. No, yeah. my, no, my my kind of my thing is you're, you're you're assigning this group. You're saying this group is deciding to portray themselves this way, but the person that the individual who walks through the door that is part of that ethnicity had no say in that. Has no power over that. Yeah. He didn't decide that. So if you say. I think uh, I'm gonna say colored people, and a black guy says like, "Oh, you can't say that." I'd be like, "Your group said it was okay." It's not like, my that's group. That's ridiculous. Bro. Yeah, that person had no choice over the end of it's no different than right, calling your. Hold on. It's no call, different than calling you a slave owner because right. generations way before exactly. you owned slaves. Exactly. That's you, know, you, you have no connection to that. Exactly. Let, let me let me let me say this. So like, if if you're tall, mm -hmm. and there's a group that calls themselves tall, and I say, "Well, your group." But if, the, if, if that group Why is it different? Let me explain. If that group <laughs> was... This is a word. That's just if that like, group was... Well, word. if that group was no, no, formed no, 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 10 years ago and it was like their, giants their and you don't want to be called a giant, I mean, exactly. but the group was called, you know, yeah, formed was, 80 fine, years going, ago. Going with that, yeah, midgets. Right. Midgets, yeah. Well, Are people offended by midgets sometimes? Are sure. Yeah. 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 I read something the other day that said people you can't call people Eskimos anymore. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wait. I think it's... They used to be called like meat eaters. They're just yeah. like how about the L G T whatever you know yeah, that LGBT acronym. Q. So if I if I call a female that's that's gay a lesbian and she goes wait hold on no. I think you're safe on that on, right wait. now for now. We're good. <laughs> I love that answer. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, 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 you can't predict how it's going to be in ten years though. It could be different. Um, I think that basically I think I'm the point. with the word lesbian. Yeah. I think that you'd be in the clear in terms of assuming that a oh gay God, female is so referred hot. to as a lesbian. So but a if, black guy's not she, referred to as a colored person? Yeah, I think I, that they I, get, I, 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 I think it's uh, just when, when it's the, like the, the word term colored faggot person and retarded, came like it just vogue, it's it's there, offensive there now, such, you know? It's such yeah. a, a huge just power like, differential between the majority culture, whites, and uh, the minority culture. I think it's the root of the word. The root of and, the word is like, all right, you know, it, it well, was now we've got these colored folk like, running around. It's, yeah, you know, it was, it was never intended as a compliment. Yeah. And so, and I, you know, there's a lot of history attached to the phrase colored people. But and, that's what they call themselves. So you can't keep saying that. saying they call themselves <laughs> for <laughs> fuck's sake, Who else are we talking about? It, 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 see, here's, <laughs> name one this, black person you know that says I'm colored. Exactly, like, exactly. Let's call the NAACP. No, 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 you know, bro, a person that you know. Wait, wait, wait. You know, let's call Terrell right now. Call Terrell, say, hey, are you colored? George Gore. <laughs> the white Terrell or the black Terrell? <laughs> no, but I, 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 I get, I get what you're trying to go with. So wait, hold on. I get what you're trying to go with. Oh, Terrell, I'm sorry to ask you this. <laughs> Again, I'm sorry to ask you this. George, guy. pull that shit up. <laughs> I, I see. So what who's the going. NAACP made up? Made up a bunch of white people. It was, it's an acronym that was formed. How? When was the NAACP formed? Yeah, bro? George. You formed know, like, by black people. Yeah, but it was something that was, you know, like they they really didn't have many options. You what? Know, they like, don't have options. It's 2019. They could name. Anything. The difference in what you're talking about, though, because now it's an yeah. acronym. People don't refer to it as like the National Association, yeah. blah blah. Color. It's like people. saying the NBA is not the you know the Basketball Association. Like the thing is, though, you're what you're doing is is you're saying if you're part of this race, you're part of this decision to have this group, and that's just not true. That's it. Because the only let me think about that. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> like think, let's say yeah. let's say there was you know it's it's funny because I'm trying to think of like. You know, a mirror Colored situation, people. but it'd be—it's hard to think of one. Let's say. Um, well, uh, I, I think I can prove your point. I think uh, yeah. maybe this is what you're saying. The KKK. Not all white people are Klansmen. No, wait, no, it's, that's it's, not, a, that's it's a little different. It's a little different. It's a little different. So it's like it's almost like this. Ready? Let's say your family was like, "Listen, we're all changing our name. We're changing our last name to the Pink Peacocks. We're all going to do it." And then, and then your family did that. They all legally did it. And you're like, I don't want to change my last name to the Pink Peacocks. And someone knows you. And they're like, oh, that's, you know, what's your mom's name? Her. Her real name. Real her, her, name. First name her first name. It's Cora. Short if some, for if someone says, like, oh, that's Cora's son. Hey, your, your last name is Pink Peacock. And you're like, no, no, I'm not really behind that. I didn't really make the decision to change my name to Pink Peacock. They're like, no, you're, you're part of your family. And your family decided that. So you're Pink Peacock, right? You'd be like, no, I'm not. 
right? Uh, Even though your family made this decision as this as this thing, just because you're part of that group doesn't mean you have to necessarily stand behind a hundred percent of the decisions they say. So if you meet a black guy and you say the word colored and you say he says, Hey, don't say that word, it's an antiquated word that we don't use anymore and you say, Well what about the N N NAACP? He could say, I don't give a shit about the NAACP. Yeah. I never met anyone that's part of the NAACP. <laughs> oh, oh, I, my it's name no is different Terrell, than calling him <laughs> it's no different than calling them Negroes, you know, like that was an okay term many years ago, but right. now it's like, dude, you just can't go up and say what's up, that's Negro. Like actually they still say that word down in the in the South, like Mississippi, Alabama. Oh, that's and... who you want to align yourself with. <laughs> <laughs> no. But what, I, what I'm saying is that, you know, depending on where you are, the, the, the you know, obviously they, they use those words. But, you know, hey, how, wrapping on, this up on. really fast. Well, before, all right, go ahead. We're kind of beating a dead horse yeah, yeah. here. Well, you're um, beating the dead horse. Well, no, I'm just, I mean, this is just you know, it's talk discussion. about it. Whatever. Yeah, it's, discussion. Just, it's just dialogue. Yeah. But, um, so as far as, as, as the whole NAACP and the colored people, I can understand somebody not wanting to align themselves with the, the NAACP, but I've never heard... I've never experienced a, a, a black person saying that what? they don't. Oh. Well, I've also, <laughs> I've also... I've never seen one in real life. I've, I've never seen a black person ever. I've never experienced uh, a black person being called colored in, in front of me. Yeah. And I've never experienced a black person talk about the NAACP in any term mm -hmm. whatsoever. So it's difficult. Um, I mean, that's well, a pretty big organization. Yeah, you're not invited to those meetings, dude. Well, it's just, it's just you know, like, you're not supposed to say... That's a huge organization. Oriental, Oriental I mean, a very... thing you're not supposed to say. Retarded. Like I'm Asian, and I don't, you know, me, myself, I don't... Yeah, but you're... Fuck you're, you're, fuck you're you also have Oriental. thicker skin, but that's, but that's, like, you know, like, and you're very, <clears throat> like... You're vulgar, dude. You know, like you're you're offensive in your nature, so you're gonna yes, have and. thicker skin than most people. And. You know, you're you're not really a good what's bar. the word? Like Person yeah, you're not the bar, bro. You're not, <laughs> yeah, human. <laughs> human. Yeah. You're not the bar, dude. I gonna, you know, I was gonna say it's also here's here's what you gotta remember. If you you know the the phrase of like I have a black friend, I have a gay friend, so it's okay to say this stuff is bullshit because that person doesn't re represent their race. You know what I mean? It doesn't represent their whole like, their whole culture. Yeah. It's you a million different uh, you know, individuals that make that up. And and this, the idea that one person can say, well, this is okay for everybody is See, is, I, I is think bullshit. the exact opposite. Yeah. I think anybody should be allowed to say anything. It's up to the person that's receiving to understand the context and right. either get you know not get offended or whatever. Um, I, that's how I, that's personally how well, I... Then, to an extent, it's, dude. It's difficult to because extent. you feel like that because you're probably someone that doesn't really have have any prejudice or hate like real you know what i mean like you have these like understandings of of uh cultural stereotypes that you might joke about but you don't have any hate like i don't trust no this i don't person, have right? any hate at all, right. at all but yeah. there are people that do and yeah. the idea of someone being like meeting let's say you or meeting a racist person that uses the same language and the idea that it's up to them to try to decipher that that person has hate and you don't well, it's kind of a weird i've never looked at it that them. way you know what I mean? Yeah. Because how are they going to know the difference? Like, let's say you say Jew, right? Like that. It's no different well, than... Which is not, which is not a big deal. You know. have to take context, right? Hold on. I, I think it's no different than... <clears throat> I know your sense of humor, and you know right. mine. If I'm meeting a stranger... Right. And I'm just being sarcastic with them... Most of my friends are going to know I'm not serious. They're right, just like, wow, right. this dude is a dick. Like, he's exactly. just being well, an asshole. I have never experienced that in my life, and I'm very vocal and very, very straightforward. And never I, experienced what? What you're saying. Like, Sarcasm? Some being offensive. Some being offended at what you said. Right. Actually, you know what? The, I get the exact opposite Hold on. Reaction. Nobody's ever thought you were a dick? No. From being, like, that straightforward oh, like that's not true dude <laughs> what do you mean that's very true <laughs> that's not true there's no way i've met you like i remember not knowing you and i was like wow that guy's a dick if like, i came up to you and i was like <laughs> <laughs> no if I, if I came up to you and i was like whatever you're just a spick you would not think that i'm a dick you'd but be i like, know you like, now like i know you <laughs> now but if if i if yeah. brad just said that you know no, like, exactly i would just be like i'm telling you from my experience from my experience i've actually i've picked up women that way uh yeah but what you're saying right now is your experience is different than my experience i want to meet them so that's I but that should be a, like an eye opener to you that your experience of mine is different, so you yeah. you can't really you know generalize them both. No, no I'm just but, speaking from mine. I'm saying like I mean, uh, you know when, it don't when, matter though, bro. Even when I was in the service, you know, and I I, I have conversations with uh, African Americans, black people, whatever you want to call them. Um, <laughs> sure. Back and forth, we'd have this this same conversation, right. you know, going back and forth, blah blah. They would turn out to be my best friends. Yeah, we've actually oh, sure. had we've had. Uh, Two, I'm, I'm just gonna, for the sake of being safe, I'm gonna call them brothers. We had two brothers. I'm, 
<laughs> nah, this is two of my, you know, two of my friends we had on the show. George, what are you involved hey, in? Bro? We had two, you know, two two of my friends that are, they're both black and they were on the show, and he he doesn't change. It's not like he, right. you know, he he won't say this to people that are because he just feels it. You know what I mean? He's, um, I, why am I defending you right they're now? Because they're anyway, not idiots. Stop calling them they. No, I'm saying, well, they're not, they're, they're not idiots. <laughs> and our guests, they're, they're not idiots either. They, they I wanted to, talk, I wanted to talk about saying. Endgame. Not... You guys both watched Endgame, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Enough about blacks. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're I, I, I just, the final thing I'll say is, like, I do think, like, if you say... But I appreciate you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah if, you, if, you, if you say to him, the first thing I'll get when I win the lottery is get a Jew to handle my money, right? He knows you, <clears throat> knows there's no hate, you're being yeah. funny, whatever. If you say that in the mall to him and someone sitting behind you only hears that sentence from your mouth, right, and right. that's the only thing they hear from you, why is that person supposed to understand that you are... Aren't they judging, though? Uh, they, yeah, they're judging like kind of a, a stereotypical yeah. weird. Yeah, you know what I mean? and it's no different it's than if, if they heard me. It's no different than if they heard me drop the n word. I was you know gonna what say, I mean? what like, if he says the n word? What is that? Yeah, what? but is, I get isn't it. that pulling out of thin air? You're you're totally. You're, you're taking the worst case scenario and you're applying it to that person. Worst no, I think they're just. Is this guy using no. the n word as a racist? I think they're just <laughs> taking it. I think they would just be taking it literally based on what they hear. Exactly. You know what I mean? Right. That's, Knowing that's, me that's is the, the extra step. You, yeah. you want to hear this? Ready? I was in the bathroom. So you can never say. I, but listen, oh yeah, I, this is good. Spick, tell us I, more. I, tell I us more. Yet, I peed yesterday. Don't, don't say that. <laughs> I pee. I pee in the bathroom. Rice is rice. Avengers. Rice is rice. And someone's in the bathroom and he goes. Listen, I hear him whispering on his phone. He goes, I'm gonna fucking kill you. If you don't get me my money, I'm gonna fucking kill you. I know where you live. I know what your license plate is. I know what your kids look like. And I'll fucking kill you if I don't get my money. Right? Could have been a joke. Like, that, that's your that's your argument. Is like, don't don't assume. That really happened? Right. Yeah, that really happened to me yesterday in Dartmouth. Well, what, what's the, the, what's the right thing to do? What's the right thing to do? Because he goes, it's comfy your ass logic, and be like, don't assume that he's being serious. Well, hold on. You, what, we, two, two totally different things. Because you're talking about somebody's harm, possibly harming somebody. Or being a joke uh, for, jokester with his friend. I know, but I mean, you don't want, obviously, you don't want to joke around with somebody's life. You right. know, like, if somebody says, hey, I'm going to commit suicide, you don't want to be like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. You know, that kind of thing. I guess right. unless you're but, ignoring. But I mean, if somebody, if somebody comes, you know, somebody says the word Mick, you know. The, What's Mick mean? That's you know slang for Irish people. Oh, I never it's heard derogatory. That's, that must be a plus forty thing. Uh, or patty or whatever. Blah blah blah. I mean, I I could be totally offended, or I don't even know what the fuck they're talking about. How how could I even like assume? You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, it's weird because like they could be talking about a hamburger patty. I don't fucking know. Well, All I mean, right, don't that, be that context. Yeah, come on. Know. You know oh, the difference. Listen, if some this guy, if you he and wants I, to eat if an they're like, hey. with cheese, <laughs> <laughs> if they're like, oh, this fucking <laughs> patty, <laughs> this patty was over here talking hey, shit to me. I'm a cheese. You're like, oh, it's <laughs> an interesting burger. <laughs> Alrighty. No, but All right, I think so, we we totally beat the whole race thing. I'm yeah, sorry, I didn't mean. I wanted to. Serious. We well, were talking about something common. Something that's kind of similar, though. I know you guys talk. You know, um, you have the Avengers. We're trying to remake. wrap this up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so Avengers. I don't know if you saw, but the the writers or the producers, somebody was getting don't some backlash yeah. that the uh, the only gay character in all of the Avengers series didn't get enough. Recognition or screen time? Did you see that article? Did you see no, those I headlines? Didn't see the article. Um, yeah. Did you guys see it yet? I did. No, I didn't. Okay. You, you saw it? I did. Yeah. You did you tell? But it's been no, it's been a few <laughs> days. Like, <laughs> sport. why does a gay person it. have to have enough time on screen? Well, representation matters. Like, I, and and this was something yeah, that when, yeah, it, it does in yeah. art. It it, does. I mean, I don't like, you have to force like, it. Like, I, I, if it's not there, it's not there. Was, was Black I mean, they're Panther but, forcing it. But hold on, they're not. I tell, think Black Panther was they're definitely not telling us it. that every. They're just not <laughs> talking about their sexual orientation, right? For I, any of the characters, which I'm okay with. I, I don't need to know that he's straight. I'm just. I'm not assuming he's straight or gay. I'm not even thinking about who he bangs. Right. And they're just, you know, like, I, why does it have to be brought up? Uh, I, 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 I agree with the idea that like sometimes I think it's not important. Like people talk about like Disney movies having gay characters, and I'm like, man, like aren't some of these hey, characters like kind of sexless? To yeah. me, anyway. Like, but you know if you I mean? if you watch Beauty and the Beast, Gaston's sidekick was kind of a genius. Oh no, like they the, definitely. He was they good. Definitely I understand what gay. he was good. But like if you oh, watch, if you watch like uh, like I don't know if you watched uh, any of the Disney movies and you think about like Timon and Pumbaa, like the idea that they're not like gay. Like I don't know if they're gay. I mean, Maybe I, they are gay. Nathan Lane. But so I, some, some stuff. I ask the question: What does it matter? Who cares what they're doing in the bedroom? Well, yeah, I think for some stuff. I mean, the idea of. I don't really believe that um, you should be able to force the hand of someone making something artistic and make it a certain thing. Because right. I've talked about the idea of like sometimes I feel like if I wanted to write something, 
if you made like a certain person that was like a specific gender, a specific race of villain, I don't love the idea that now that's a commentary on gender and race. Right. I, yes. You know what I mean? It's, it's yes, a bum out. Dude. You know what I mean? Like if you're like, oh, you know, let's say it's art. It's your creation. You know, yeah, like, like you shouldn't be yeah. held to somebody else's standard. Like, I, don't, right. I don't like the idea. If you don't like it, don't watch it. Don't read yeah. it. Don't whatever. Don't. If, if you watch something where you know, like if you watched uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and you, would, I mean, that's not a good example. I can think of a ton of a movie. The principal was a pedophile, right? Yes, in real life. In real life, he was a pedophile. But, but the idea of like all these like older movies where I think that some stuff was a little bit more you know pure like let's say that uh, a, a woman was the bad guy in a movie it bums me out to be for someone to look at that and be like they're saying that all women are bad or something like that and sometimes I feel like it goes in that it territory. doesn't bum me out you know what I roll my eyes at that because I'm like come on are you fu-? that's not what anybody is saying nobody is saying that all women are bad because this whore cheated on her guy in this movie you know what well, I mean imagine like, nobody's every- saying all women are bad <laughs> imagine in our society if every single group of people whether it be Blacks, whites, spicks, chinks, gays, what straights, whites, whatever. Any, everybody has a case. Anything else you want to add? Yeah, no, I'm <laughs> saying well, everybody is. Well, everybody has Deeper. a case. You can look Those at are any all movie. keywords. George you, you can look. You, you can watch any single movie. You can read any book and be like, hey, look, we're not represented enough. Yeah. I think the problem with this, the Avengers movie, is that Marvel kind of like tried to push. Are you sure about that? What character are they talking about? Um, it was in you know the when Captain America was oh, in that I support know. group. Oh, I know. Yeah, it wasn't that character. Wasn't it was, enough? Yeah, I have it, to read this article. You know, yeah. so when Captain America's in that support I, group, yes, and there, you know, the dude was talking and he was talking about He's a gay. date that he had. Yeah, and he He's was just gay. like he, and that was the only reference they had to right. it. But I guess Marvel, from what I read in this article, Marvel was pushing the fact that. Uh, you know, out of all the 22 movies we make, finally, we you know, this is our first movie where oh, we have funny. an openly gay person. So they're advertising that. I, 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 and I, then they only have, you know, they right. they give them a very I did, small clip. I didn't know clip. they were advertising I will say this. It. I didn't either. I'll, I don't, I'll, I'll say that's this. not what I look for in superhero movies. I'm just like, who's fucking who? I'll say this. A lot of times, articles are like, what can we make to, click what can baby. we say to get people to get, to click on this? Yeah, and what will happen shit. is, Marvel might make a movie as a, as a huge machine, huge machine of different people. And they might put this gay character in it. Then an article comes out from a third-party site that mm. says, Marvel's first gay character is in Endgame because that sounds like a clickbait thing, mm. right? And then another article comes out and says, right. hey, Marvel's trying to push this as having a gay character. Marvel's yeah. not trying to push shit. It was that third-party clickbait website that tried to trying to like do that. that. Yeah. So everyone's kind of just true, commenting true. on these different things. To, if, if you read that article, I'd be really surprised if they had any real... Uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really dig down into that yeah. rabbit hole. If, I, I bet they wouldn't... I was just... More, like, for me, it was an eye roll. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, first of all, why the fuck does it matter? Like, I, don't, I, didn't, I watched That's the movie exactly for three hours, 180 minutes, I'm in that fucking theater, I and I didn't think of one time, like, I wonder if he's gay or not. Say, like, I, I was like, if Marvel did market this movie in any way as, wow, this movie has our first gay character, then I agree with the article. Then it's but fucked I'm, up, yeah. Then I'm, then I'm 100% but I don't remember sure seeing any true. commercials. I'm 100% sure. I'm pretty sure there was... Hey, hold on. Was, uh, this is Avengers the only... Endgame, semicolon, now with gay people. <laughs> no. <laughs> the only, the <laughs> only gay marketing I saw from Marvel was that. All right. Okay. That's all I saw. You know? <laughs> Why is That's that gay? <laughs> hey, man. I, I'll say, Why don't you pose like that and we'll figure it out? Because that, that would be that would be that would be very strange. The idea of like, yeah. now we have a gay person and he's in two minutes at the beginning. Yeah, and um, it's real quick. No, what did you guys true. think of the movie? I love the movie. Loved it. I couldn't Loved believe it. it. Yeah. I was blown Long away by the by how well. Um, paste it was I was blown away yeah it didn't the, feel like three hours so don't spoil we're don't not gonna, spoil we're not gonna spoil do you know anything about the, the plot of this movie or no no he's I never have, watched I any have, Marvel movie ever did you spoil it he's yes, not I gonna have. watch it what'd you have what'd you watch the ambiguously gay I dude have, <laughs> <laughs> I have to watch actually Infinity Wars again okay. just because just so you know I heard yeah. this is a direct like oh yeah you know. and it, I mean this is Basically, to me, this movie is like... It's like a know, sequel to that. Yeah. You I mean, could probably watch only those two and well, still say, appreciate Infinity Endgame. War, you know, it sets up the idea that all those heroes are dead. And so you're going knowing, like, okay, well, what's going to happen? Thanos won, so are they going to beat up Thanos? What's going to happen? But the decision that they make in what direction they go is yeah. outrageous. Genius. It it's, genius. It's, it's, it's so unprecedented. It's one of those things where, like, you would think about it with your friends and be like, wouldn't it be crazy if they did this? And you'd be like, they would never do that. And they did it. They did, did it. more than that. They did yeah. more than exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. They did more they're like they introduce it and they're like we're gonna do this yeah. crazy thing and you're like this oh is i can't wait up. to see it and then it goes into more spider webs and right when and like, right when that you know that the, i'll just say the battle yeah right before that battle happens you're like you're so many emotions oh. you're like what 
fucking wild. You're happy. You're like, yeah. you want to know what I think? It's incredible. This is it was genius. What are the keys? And it made sense. Movie? It wasn't like fake super. I, I didn't mean to cut you off, no, but no. It, it wasn't just like, oh, of course, you know, blah blah blah. It was, battle, everything yeah, yeah. made sense, you know. I like, agree. Yeah. I'll, I'll say one of the things that I think was the key to making this movie amazing. Is Scarlett that Johansson. The first half of the movie, the first half an hour of the movie, is so slow. And so sad and so dark, and the world is just fucked because half mm. the people died in the yeah. humanity war, and they're just living in that. Yeah. Captain America is like going to the support meeting to yeah. help people. They didn't like, skip that either. And like, he's like, he's like, yeah, he's like, you know, we gotta move on, but he's just not down to move on, and he's just fucked up, and they're all like that, and the whole world is like that, yeah. and it's like, it's impressive that they. It was, it was impressive it was that they. Is were it a like, movie to see in four D? <clears throat> 4D. Yeah. Man. I don't mind a 4D movie. Nah, there's no? not a lot of... It snows on you. Oh, yeah. yeah. A wave crashes on your I, head. I, I actually saw The Nun. Hey, watch 4D <laughs> porn, bro. You actually come. The horror yeah, flick. <laughs> the Nun in 4D? Yeah. yeah. It was fucking was there crazy. Was a nun? Yeah. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> you know, w- w- without the 4D, I would have I would have probably walked out on the movie, but, you know, like... I'm, I'm, because it had a strong female add? lead. What, so, so what I know of 4D... It's like, 4D, they can spray you with water. They yeah. can move your seat. Just... They, they can snow, whatever. They, snow. they didn't do it, during, obviously, during the nun, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, things hit you in the back, you know, touch your feet and all, all kinds of stuff. The chair moves. And what, touch, and what touches your feet? Um, I, don't, I don't even know what it is. It's probably air jets. Oh. Yeah, something it's like, like they that. have a bunch of... I went to they have 80 little, they have 80 face, little yeah. kids they hire to just <laughs> grab your ankle. That'd be fun. I'd go, to, I'd go to that. Imagine, like, a, a porno not? flick in 4D. Oh. If you don't... If Civil War... <laughs> if they re-release Civil War... In 4D? In 4D, we'll go. It'll, it snows in it. Well, if there's going to be fake snow involved, I'm in. <laughs> All righty, guys. Right, yeah. Yeah, probably, go ahead. probably time to wrap this shit up. It's been going a little bit. What do you think? Anything else you got? What do you Before, think, George? What do you think, George? Yeah. No, George is the, is the king of the castle. He, he He's our Jamie. Like, every time <laughs> any of us say anything, we look at George and he gives either a thumbs up or thumbs down. I really yeah. appreciate yeah. you guys coming out. Yeah, really, really yeah, of course. Like, you guys um, are awesome. Before we go, I, I, did, I wanted to run through a couple of places that anybody can find you guys. I know you're here to promote the... You tell it. You tell yeah, yeah, yeah. Everywhere, so, everywhere. So, uh, you know, we're the Chuck and Brad Podcast. I'm yep. Chuck. Whoop, Brad. Chuck and Brad. <clears throat> and uh, it's called the Chuck and Brad Podcast. We're on every podcast app, iTunes, everything. You can go to chuckandbradpodcast.com to find out info about us. Uh, Facebook.com slash Chuck and Brad. We use my Instagram at Discount Chuck. And uh, Twitter is at Discount Chuck. And he's at Brad Roar. B-R-A-D-R-O-H-R-E-R. Good. And... Uh, <laughs> What we're promoting is uh, our 400th episode of the podcast. We're going to be doing it live on Thursday, May 16th. It's a comedy connection. Uh, We're going to have Ray Harrington on the stage, great comedian, along with uh, Alan Moreau, EJ Edmonds, and Larry Sores. Sores. Thank you, Brad. Uh, RI Food Fights is sponsoring the event, so you know it's going to be great. It's going to be basically a live comedy variety show. You guys should go. It's it's really, really fun. And we really love to fuck with Ray because he's like a serious comedian. He's yeah. like he tours and he has like a documentary on Hulu and he's like a real comedian that like has just been kind of nice enough to let us play with him on stage. And uh, we really put him through some shit and it's fun. Yeah, nice. Um, but our shows, it's it's not like a live podcast. We're not going to sit down and talk about something. It's going to be just straight comedy segments all throughout the night. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, it sounds fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and our buddy Brian Bowden is also going to be. Appearing somehow, yeah, we in a in a video out. segment yeah. that he's doing. Yeah, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be no very doubt. fun. If uh, yeah, we'll definitely put all the links in that shit to to this Perfect. video description, the Facebook Absolutely. post, everything. Appreciate it. All the links. Anything I might miss? You do um, any I, other improv I, night? Any I, I any, do any Friday yeah. nights at the Providence Improv Guild in Providence, Rhode Island, three ninety three mm-hmm. Broad Street. Tickets are just five bucks. You can check out more information at improvpig.com. If you want some music to listen to on your way to uh, the Providence Improv Guild, check out the Senior <laughs> Discounts Fucking album. genius. Yeah, yeah. Uh, work well together. On Paper and Plastic Records. That's uh, right. The album is called The Best Revenge. Yeah, we're and, on all the uh, streaming services. Yes. As well. SeniorDiscountMusic.com, like you said. But we're on everything. I know that no one goes to websites. Just use your Spotify or whatever you want to use. iTunes, Spotify, all yeah, the good all shit. All the good shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. It's good stuff, man. All right, cool. Guys, thanks. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, um, you yeah, just want to give a quick Absolutely. thanks to the sponsors, bro? Yeah, we could do that later. All right, cool, man. We'll <laughs> do it later. Hey, thanks for listening, guys. Peace. Bye. Later. Don't say anything offensive. <laughs> All righty, guys. So we just want to thank, again, our endorsers. Are we doing video with this also? Oh, hey, what's up, guys? We just want to thank our endorsers again. Uh, Division Street Auto. Thank you, George. Um, you can find them at... What's the address? 595 Division Street. Give them a call, 401-723-7080. Uh, Tops Electric Supply Showroom and Gallery. Um, 
Again, anything lights or electric, uh, give them a call. 401-861-0695. Oneyville Tire. They're at 86 Plainville Street. Plainville Street, Providence 401-421-1800, JW and Son Construction, uh, Donkey Dodgers Poker, uh, you can find them on Facebook, and Legends Pub and Grub and Pub and Grub in Cranston. Yeah, you can um, you can find them at 14, what's that, what did you write right here, 1458, is that what you wrote, what, what are you doing? <laughs> 1458. Oh, 1458 Park Ave. And that's it, guys. Thank you very, very, very much. Thanks for listening. Bye.